boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Two weeks in a row? They mm -hmm. let us get together two weeks in a row? Oh, baby. Hello, Twitch chat slash YouTube slash... That's it? These are the only people that are going to be watching? Yeah. The people hey. who downloaded it and are just watching oh, it on their own computer? People. There's the podcast people, too. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. There's people that listen to it audio only. Hello, audio <laughs> only. How you doing? Are you ready for something vaguely erotic? Because this, this book is vaguely erotic. It's just, you... it's it's the edging of choose your own. <laughs> the, the, people, the people who are listening to this audio only are going to uh. really uh, have to have the, the, the visualization working overtime. Yeah. Everybody's nude in this book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dice Friends. It's uh, not the usual stuff because they let me have control once again. Two weeks in a row for Choose Your Own Adventure books. But this time, this is the first time we are ever going back to a book. So if you will remember way back, I think it was like a year ago now, wasn't it? Wasn't it more than a year ago? It's a while. It was a long It was time over a year ago. ago because we would have been in yeah. the office when it happened. Yeah, oh, yeah if you were in the before. office, everything was yeah. more than a year ago. <laughs> yeah, it was more than a year ago. And uh, Beej and I uh, played a book that was sent in by a viewer um, called The Fairy Mound of Dragonkind, which uh, <laughs> ended up being one of the one of the best ones we've ever done because just the book is ridiculous. Um, but Paul wasn't there. Mm. And I was like, we've been talking about going back to a book at some point because we haven't we have, I don't think we've only finished the fighting fantasy ones. We haven't finished one of these. Yeah, we yeah. that's right. Or just yeah. like they're so long it's just like we never we never get to the end. So, today we are going back into the fairy mound and I don't remember anything. Oh yeah, good. I'm yeah. I was going to say I I feel like there is no guarantee or even like I feel like the chances of us getting to the end of this today are the same as they were the first time. About, about zero. Yeah, there's... No, but I'll try to remember. I'll try to make some different decisions if I can. I'm trying to remember, but... There are I some like, specific... I remember, yeah, I remember, like, specific things. I remember going up into the clouds, and that lady was there, and then we stole all her stuff. And then there was the troll hole. I or remember... Was, no, was the troll hole in the dwarf one? Was it might have been in the dwarf one. There was a... There, there was a um, I, we'll I remember... It. I remember us fighting the wizard's lab when he wasn't there. Oh yeah, that's the yeah. We're and I remember with sparks. Yeah. yeah, and I remember like when we did that, you were uh, you were like, "I'm gonna do this," and I'm sitting there. I never said it on stream, but I was sitting there being like, "He's gonna fucking die because of this decision you made," and you got something amazing out of it. And I'm like, "Oh, we got to do that again." But how do I not? How do I not? Like yeah. telegraph it to you because you gotta it's gotta gotta be Adam making decisions, right? Yeah. So so I mean it's a group effort, right? Like, yes. I, like I don't I don't want you to like if you know the outcome, I'd rather you not <laughs> push me to the the one that you want, right? But if it's, we don't know, like yeah. we just talk about it. I, I love we, arguing about I love arguing about situations like this. Like we're in a fantasy world that has no meaning, but yeah. you defend your point to death, like, oh my god. Mm -hmm. Well, it's what I like about <laughs> what, what I like about Choose Your Adventures is, yeah. uh, or, or playing Choose Your Adventures with Adam, is that uh, <laughs> with the I know especially with the fighting fantasy ones, the 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 transition that Adam goes through almost every as he plays, like he gets more and more. Uh, you know, like the first time he like meets people, he's like, "Oh, hello! I will help you with the, this, this." this. <laughs> and then, like later on in the book, there'll be like guy who's like, "Help! I'm trapped in this jail." And Adam will be like, "That guy's probably there's probably something tricky going on." Like, Good, nope, not gonna help him. <laughs> yeah. You went through you went through the entire system. I guess you belong there in medieval jail. Yeah, you what, did yeah. something wrong. Yeah, what could you have been possibly arrested for in medieval jail? That 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 you're innocently. Yeah, there's no way the, you're innocent. It's the, yeah. the, the books are the, this combination, especially the fighting fantasy books, but also these ones, they have that combination of like, you know, punishing you for uh, being like, why would you do that? That was stupid. Yeah. Well, they take damage, but then also <laughs> punishing you for the thing, <laughs> like randomly <laughs> also punishing you for the thing that is logical to do. Yeah. And so basically yeah. you're just like, I, I, 
I'll be punished no matter what I do. I might as well just do whatever I want. And this one's different because this one kills you less, but teleports you in replacement. It's re it has a replacement effect for death, it's, which is it just teleports you to a different part of the <laughs> sends you to a fairy tale. Yeah, I, like, I feel like oh, the sick. the yeah the the theme of this is not that the fairies want to kill you; they're just the fairies want to just mess with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, until you so, get old and and die. Like yeah, yeah. Before we get started, a couple things. Uh, this show is brought to you as with every other show that we do on Loading Ready Run, by your gen or generous uh, support at our Patreon at patreon.com slash Loading Ready Run. You let us keep the lights on. You let us do, let me and Beej and Paul hang out and do this fun book. And you let us do stuff like Checkpoint and Friday Night Paper Fight and a list of other things, Road Quest, everything else. So uh, thank you very, very much. Also, make sure you go to store.loadingreadyrun.com. Check out something there. You can buy all kinds of stuff. We have water bottles, play mats t-shirts um this is one of the newer ones yeah um we also have a don't talk about bike club t-shirt which is mm -hmm. in reference to our vampire the masquerade campaign that we did yeah, with jacob yeah. burgess which is also new so make sure you go check out our store please yeah. please and thank if, you and if we're out of something put your email address in there if you want to know when it's coming back in because it lets me know i should reorder it oh nice yeah this i won't we don't use that information for anything else because i Frankly, can't be fucking bothered to spam you people. Like, <laughs> what if you just get an email one day from me? Just hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't even spam ah, me. you sucker! You put your email address in. <laughs> no, just a hi. That's it. Yeah, just, just a hi. hi. Hey, what up? Yeah. Hey. hey, what you doing? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, that pretty much covers it. I'm excited to get. There's a little bit of. There's not much setup for this one. Yeah, um, it's not the is... read four pages before you get no. to make a decision. So the last time we played this game, uh, I was the bard, but this time we're going to play the fighter. So I will reread the introduction to the fighter. Uh, we'll get a slight setup for the storyline and what we're doing, and then we'll just go right into it. Um, there are a couple of things that I will note beforehand. Combat is pretty easy, and we're not really going to delve into it too deep. It's all on a D12 system. Uh, it works just like the fighting fantasy ones, where I go first, unless stated otherwise, then the monster goes, then... We alternate back and forth until one of us runs out of hit points. Um, there is also something called the Elf. Um, I don't think we ran into it last time. We did it, but uh, I have asked Paul to pick a page. And if I come to that page, or that number specifically, it's the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it, I, it, the idea is the Elf is a bookmark. Yeah. So, yeah, so if, if, you, it, if you pick, like, page 9, then you'd be like, oh, okay, then I guess I opened it to page 9, and there's the Elf. So, uh, yeah. so it actually will... I, it's actually two pages, right? Because it's like two faces. So, uh, oh yeah. So it'll it will. There's there's this, there's two pages that you can hit that will activate the elf, and mm -hmm. then and once the elf activates, then we'll move it to somewhere else. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So, all right, let's get started. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to play this. Oh okay. yeah, me too. I'm so excited. Oh man. Okay. All right. Uh, the character we are playing, uh, you are Brenny's, a horse warrior renowned for your prowess, both on horseback and driving a chariot. Your arrival at, uh, at a battlefield in a thundering chariot strikes terror in the hearts of the enemy, and your power and agility on a horse leave little doubt as to who rules the day. But on this day... Your equine and driving skills do you little good. Your quest takes you into territory where those skills avail you nothing. Ah, perfect. Why bring all this? Yeah. <laughs> I know we talked about this last time, but it doesn't make any it still you doesn't make any sense. You are the horse master. <laughs> yeah. So this is a, why don't we hire somebody else? Yeah. As the fighter, you enter the fairy mound of Dragonkind wearing bronze plate mail and wielding your magical plus two sword, Heart Seeker. Your weapon does a total of seven life points of damage, and in your skilled hands, it strikes on a combat score of ten or less. Uh, beside your empty backpack, you carry the following: a potion of healing, a ring of protection, which negates the first life point loss uh, or first life point of damage you receive in every new battle, which that's is pretty, pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. And then uh, this warrior has a sphere of time. <laughs> Is, so I uh, I can re-roll basically one unsuccessful encounter. Okay. For the journey. So this warrior like pulls the bobble out and he's like, mm. It is. I don't know. Kiss, he kisses it. I get it. <laughs> the, the sphere of putting your thumb in the page. While yeah. You're yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't know. I don't know what, what is considered to be an encounter. Is that like a... 
I think it's like like one of the um like when one you're of the I guess choices, I guess. Yeah, it's like, like when you're in a room there's like a bunch of stuff for you to do. I'm assuming like if I die or like I someone stops talking to me, I can just anytime I get something that I didn't want to have happen. Right. Basically. Right? I feel like it's like it's like when it Re-roll sends it. you back to like the place where you choose what to do in the room. Mm-hmm. Like that's an encounter is like choosing one of the things to do in the room. Yeah. So if I get teleported, I can be like, no, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I don't want to get teleported because that's going to happen. I'm going to get teleported. All right. Your liege lord lies near death. A strange debilitation has overtaken him and he is wasting away almost before your very eyes. The wizards have all examined him, checked the portents, portents? Yeah. and finally agreed among themselves. A rare occurrence indeed. <laughs> they say the only thing that can save your lord is an elixir made from the dust of an ancient fairy king. That's oddly specific. <laughs> they like, knew all about this. How, yeah. how do you how do you get dust from a fairy king? Look, we've Don't we've know. tested this empirically. Uh, it's yeah. about as good as the Johnson yeah. Johnson vaccine. Maybe. It's <laughs> maybe maybe we should have like the medical people look at the rather than the wizards. Should we try that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Has anyone thought about having a doctor? Can I see your certificate? You quack. You're like, <laughs> what was nah, the... we need we need fairy dust. That's what we need. Yeah. What was the name of this ancient fairy king? Uh, Glaxo Smith Klein. <laughs> Anyway. Oh, I'm upset. It didn't take long, V. That was really fast. Yeah. <laughs> the only such an elixir will bring the color back to his face and the sparkle to his eyes and the power to his sword. Without it, he dies. As the mightiest warrior in the kingdom, you have been selected to obtain the dust of the fairy king. And tonight is the night that the wizards have predicted that a fairy mound will appear for the first time in a thousand years enabling you to gain entrance. How convenient. Your heart quakes yeah. within you. This That's is right. a little too uh, right. convenient, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It just happened to be like, oh, by the way, yeah, this fairy mound's open. Yeah. This is a whole thing. They're trying to get rid of your ass. Yeah. You were going to marry the king's daughter. He's like, I'll pretend to be dying. Yeah. We'll send him into the fairy mound. We'll never see him again. Yeah. We'll be done with him. Yeah. We don't have to listen to him talk about how sick he is at driving anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's get rid of him. <laughs> It'll be like new fairy mound just drop. And everyone's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, your heart quakes within you. A strange feeling indeed for a great warrior. But the tales you have heard of the fairy kingdom warn you that you may be about to face things that no show of horsemanship or awe-inspiring chariot driving can protect you from. Mm. At least you can take Heartseeker, your magical sword, with you into the mound. Perhaps she can see you safely through and protect you from danger. Your liege lord's life depends on it. Does he take this along when he's like flirting and he's like going to see yawn beautiful wenches? Yeah. He's like, I will bring Heartseeker and then I will. She Heartseeker's like your wingman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They'll fall in love with me. (laughs) All right. Are we all ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm just going to do the introduction for both characters and then Ah. we can go right to the start. Sounds good. So Just yeah, so that's the, there's a different everybody. introduction for the bard and the fighter, but yeah. once once you uh, and now this is for both people. Yeah, you stare awestruck at the mound before you. <laughs> you are certain good that mound. it has never been here before. When you've come through these woods, the legends must be correct. Then. You wonder if they are just as correct about the unexpected tricks the creatures of fairy can play on humans. For a moment. You doubt the wisdom of entering this strange place, a place that seems unfit for humans of the ordinary world. But you have a quest, and it's one that you can't ignore, especially now that the fabled fairy mound has appeared, just as you hoped it would, and wouldn't, on this one night in a thousand years. You walk around the small mound, but see no sign of an entrance. You lean forward and cautiously place your ear to the cool grass. Straining to shut out the night sounds of the forest, you think you hear a faint melodic hum from inside the mound. You put your ear closer, but the melody is abruptly cut off. Then, remembering an old wives' tale from your your childhood, you walk around the mound nine times. (laughs) But by the time you reach the ninth circuit, you have begun to feel a bit foolish, until you notice a faint glow in the grass ahead of you. Kneeling at the spot, you push your hands into the grass, which parts before you, revealing an opening into the base of the hill. A bright light flashes out, momentarily blinding you, but you look again into the brightness until your eyes adjust. Gradually, through the, or gradually, through the brightness, you become aware 
that you are looking into a huge room, far larger than could ever fit inside the small mound you've been circling. Ooh. Magic? Magic. Oh, there's some... Oh, I, man, the art is so good. I, I love this idea where you're like, you're like listening to the mound, and there's like... Yeah. <laughs> you're listening, and then it stops. Mm -hmm. And then you just feel like... There's, there's a guy out there listening. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like Did you invite him? Window. Shut up! What? Yeah. No, no. There's a guy. It's a weird, creepy guy out there. What? Seriously? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do we call? Oh, geez. Do we call the fairy cops? <laughs> yeah. It's like when somebody uses your driveway to turn around. You're like, yeah. The... You're like, what the? F <laughs> and you like, you sit up for the next ten minutes, being like, I think he's gonna come back and murder us. Yeah. 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 It's like, what are you doing? Go should, use somebody else's driveway. What are you doing? No, just turn off the light. Turn off the light. Maybe <laughs> yeah, they'll go away. <laughs> yeah. All right. Please enter, sir. A voice sounds suddenly. You hesitate as you realize that an armor clad... Oh, that's not what an elf sounds like. Well, that's what this elf sounds like. <laughs> you hesitate as you realize that an armor clad elf is standing before you. But his gesture is welcoming, not threatening. Beyond the elf at the far end of the room rises a huge dragon throne. Seated on it is a small, wizened figure that you immediately recognize as the Fairy King. This is his realm you have entered. How will you fare here? As you stare at the king, a glass is thrust almost into your face. A leather-clad dwarf peers up at you, offering you a glass of liquid that smells like ale. A welcome smell indeed. Mm -hmm. Other intriguing things scattered around the room catch your eye. A loot, a bottle that appears to be floating in midair, roast meats, but you know that you have to deal with the people first. Will you stop and talk to the elf, Take the goblet from the dwarf and go directly <laughs> to the fairy king. Uh, and by the way, this is the, uh, yeah. we got the full, there we, there's a couple of, most of the, of the images are just one page, but this is actually a full spread. Yeah. Very sweet. It's so good, man. The art is so good. Uh, I can't remember what we did last time. So I, I love I'm going to go right to, I love the idea of like, oh, we're going to go into the fairy uh, the fairy kingdom, known for being yeah. very trickster. You go in, first thing that happens, someone's like, hey, drink this. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, go, 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 go. Go. <laughs> Excellent. Oh. Let's go to, I'm going to go talk right to the king. All going right. to 71A. Yeah. <coughs> I You're remember not... this time that I can enter the, the keys in. You discern a smile on the face of the gnarled old king as you approach him, but you're not certain it is a smile of welcome. You think you detect an underlying note of satisfaction, but his voice, when he speaks, is querulous. I don't know what that means, but I'm just going to do the... <laughs> I'm waiting to do this voice again. So, what is mortal doing in my kingdom? <laughs> he demands. <laughs> Try not to sound hesitant. You explain your quest. After foolishness? The little king exclaims. Then the strangely satisfied look returns to his features, and he says, Well, now... It is it it just might be that I let ye look around my realm and see what you can see. If ye can see your way to do something for me. Of course, your majesty, you exclaim. I'd be honored to help you in any way I could. After all, what could he ask for? It's merely a matter of a lamp. A lamp, your majesty. Yes, a lamp. A lamp. My <laughs> wife. <laughs> My wife, <laughs> <laughs> my wife, uh, pushed through it. <laughs> the queen, ye know, resides in her own quarters elsewhere within the mound. And she has taken, drat her, a lamp that's a particularly favorite of mine. Now, if ye could get it and her and return it to me, or get it from her and return it to me, well, I'd be happy to help you in your own quest. Like, is he going to just scrape off some of his own dust into a bottle for you at the end of this? Is that what we're yeah. Uh, yeah, hoping yeah, for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. yeah. It certainly seems a simple thing, and if the king will help you just for returning a lamp to him, you see no reason not to agree. You tell the king you agree to bring the lamp... To, or, Bring back his lamp, and he sits back with a pleased sigh, evidently satisfied with the bargain. How do I find the queen, you ask? That's easy enough. He makes a vague gesture to your right and says, You'll find the pool over there. Ye just leap into it, and it will magically take ye to the queen's domain. A pool, your majesty? You can almost feel the terror that being underwater instills in your heart. 
and you wonder whether you can trust this strange wizened being. But then you remember your quest. Yes, of course, your po a pool, your majesty. I'll be most happy to get the lamp for you. Thank you. The king closes his eyes and puts his head back against a convenient dragon scale. You turn and study the bustling room. Everyone in it is occupied with his or her own concerns. There are several exits from the room, but which should you take? Excuse me, sire, you say to the napping king, but can you tell me which way I should go? He stirs and opens one eye. Bah, mortal, ye say you'll do me a favor, and then ye want me to do it for ye. The eyes close again. You wait a moment, and then turn to walk away from the throne. Behind you, you hear a quiet murmur. Remember, mortal, to get safely through the pool, ye must acquire some magic items on the way. Wonderful, you think. At least the king seems to want you to get through the pool safely. You look yearningly toward the door through which you've entered this strange place, but discover that the door is gone, if it ever was there. However, there appear to be several other exits. Of course, there are some intriguing objects in the room that it might be worth your while to study. To continue from here, return to eight and choose the number of an exit or an object, and then turn to that section. All right. This is one of those, like, you have to get this thing. But in order to do it, first, you must get the thing from the fire temple, and the yeah. thing from the ice temple, <laughs> so, and the thing from yeah. the wind temple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're also wearing into... bronze armor. <laughs> mm. Yeah, maybe not swim. a good idea to go swimming. So we have to remember that when we leave this room entirely, because we haven't left it yet, when we come back, it's going to want us to uh, to do the things where it's like, if you have been here before in this adventure. Yes. Yeah, but uh, for now, we don't have to do any of that. Um. So, uh, yeah, there's sort of like a bunch of stuff in here. So, yeah. we can see. I one of the things that I really love about these catacombs books is you see there's like they they work by this like the picture, and then you can actually like see the stuff in the picture that you can interact with, which is super. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna so, pick. I have to say that your character sketching is getting a lot better. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take Ironbound. I'm just going to head through the door because I remember we looked around this room a little bit last time. So I'm just going to move on from it. I feel, yeah. I'm going to pick the door. Uh, right. Okay. 40D. 40D. Uh, as you step toward the large double door, one of the fairies at the table turns towards you and says in a low warning tone, he's not going to like being disturbed. You quickly ask who, but the delightful fairy has returned to his food. If you want to heed the fairy's warning, turn to eight. But if you're willing to go ahead anyway, 19D. That sounds good to me, buddy. Right. 19D. Don't kill me. That would be unfortunate. You, you don't you don't become the greatest warrior in the kingdom by, you know, taking people's yeah. warnings. <laughs> what am I going to do? Listen to a fairy? No, there's no way. Keep eating. You grab the iron ring and pull a heavy door toward you beyond his darkness. Rather evil smelling darkness. You, st <laughs> you step through the door and it immediately closes behind you. As soon as it does, you notice that the darkness is not complete. Instead, there is a faint glow everywhere. You see a yellow fog billowing through the wide tunnel you find yourself in. The fog consists of noxious, biting fumes that make you sneeze and choke. By the time you reach 68, you have lost one life point to the sulfurous cloud. Sulfurous? Yep. Sulfurous. Sulfurous. <laughs> sulfurous. I don't, what's my max HP? I forgot to check. Uh, no, I'll, I'll look. I'll find it. Okay, you'll find it? Thank yeah. you. Well, we lost one HP, so. All right. Doing good. Yeah. 68. Nice. So, right. So when, it, when it's just like the page number, that means it's like a new room. And when it's the page number followed by a letter then you're the ring doesn't protect us because i think it states combat yeah. the first hit yeah. Yeah, yeah first life point of damage you receive in every new battle yeah. a new battle yeah it doesn't count it doesn't mm. doesn't protect me from noxious gas which uh, okay the instant you enter the chamber sparks fly from the oh we did do this one that's okay the instant you enter the chamber uh, sparks fly from the fingers of an incredibly ancient elven wizard. Sparks don't do any particular damage, but they certainly serve notice that you're not welcome here. Glancing here quickly we around the magician's combination... <laughs> combination... I think we made this joke last time. I'm going to make a lot of the same jokes. Okay, uh, combination laboratory and library, 
you see many magical items, floating potion bottles, spellbooks, scrolls, and a five-pointed star and circle inscribed on the floor, jars of spell components, and even several pairs of mysterious eyes peering at you from atop a bookshelf. And watching each move you make is a small, curious reptile, clearly the familiar of the wizard. Suddenly, the sparks change color, and you sense that they are suddenly becoming more dangerous. Do you want to quickly try to talk to the wizard? Turn to 113A. Do you want to use your own magical weapons against the old elf? Turn to 68D. Or do you want to pretend he's not there and you just look <laughs> right. around as quickly as possible and get out? That's if the that other part of this you, that I remember, yeah. I remember that it's like almost all of your encounters you could just choose to ignore and mm-hmm. see yeah. what happens. Um, you have 50 life points, which means okay. we're currently at 49 out of 50. Nice. I don't know if we want to manage that on screen anywhere for people or not, but um, Adam's going to look after it yeah, himself. So. It's... All right. So, yeah. So he just like starts showering you with sparks, but they're not hurting you. And you're like, okay, you, cool. Yeah. But he's do like, oh, remember, these sparks are going to get bad, though, in a sec. Do you remember what you did last time? I tried to ignore him. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to fight his ass. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you want to use your own magical weapons against the old L, turn to 68D. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. <laughs> Yeah, it's certainly no friendly greeting the wizard is giving you. You pull out your weapon and prepare to fight him. Turn to 62E. Okay. 62. Oh. There's... <laughs> it's a new record, everybody. There seems to be no way that you can win against the wizard or even fight him. Before you can make a move, he transforms you into a newt. You crawl across the floor <laughs> looking for a damn place to curl up in, not even aware that you're doomed to spend the rest of your life, which will probably be quite short because of the wizard's need for Eye of Newt as a creepy crawly. Your adventure and your life is over. All right. Uh, you're you're not done. I don't think you're done, are you? Well, no, is that it? it? Yeah. That's it. Oh, that's I it. thought it went up to the next page. It doesn't. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. We just died, Beach. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that's a new speedrun record right that's there. That's a speedrun record, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to the room. Remember where it was? Whoa, whoa. Eight. We'll just go back to the main room. 68 was the room we were just in. Not the wizard. Well, I guess okay. we could try talking to him. Let's try talking to him. It's up to yeah. you, yeah. 68. Let's... 68. That's, that's amazing. I can't believe he just killed our ass. Okay. Uh, 68. Oh, there's a great art of him, too, just below. 68. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's him. All right. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to talk to him. 113. Maybe, I don't know, maybe this is maybe I don't want to fight everybody. It's like I'm so lonely, nobody comes and talks to me. 113A, yep, 113A. (laughs) Okay, well, we don't die, so there's that. Quickly, you hold up your hand at the uh, quickly, you hold up your hand in the universal symbol of peace. What is the (laughs) universe? The universal symbol. No, of, no, please no, don't kill me. No. My hands aren't full. There's nothing in my hands. See? <laughs> I just want to know what is he like? Oh, uh, uh, uh. Uh, but the wizard directs a stream of sparks straight at your palm, backing up and shaking the effects of the electrical shock from your hand. You quickly say, "Wait, Mister Wizard, please! I'm not here to do anything." Before you can go on, the wizard interrupts you. Doctor Wizard. That's right. You're not here to do anything. You're going to leave right away. Can't you see that I've got work to do? These potion bottles need replenishing. The demons need quieting. Sharkle, my familiar here, is due for a lesson in reading ancient elvish. Really, sir? (laughs) I don't think we're in any position to... Barter. Mm. Really, mm. sir, you interrupt in turn. I won't be in your way at all. I've just got to find a way to the Fairy Queen. Ah! The old elf exclaims, Another one! Well, I won't stand Where? for it. All my voices sound the same. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like Eastern Europeans. I'm just like a different flavor of Eastern European. Yeah. It's kind of okay. sliding in and out of Wario. Yeah, you gotta you gotta help me out here, Twitch. Yeah, you, you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. I'm not a voice actor, okay? Okay, another one. Well, I won't stand for it. He makes a swift sweeping gesture with one hand, and all the sparks gather around his body. They coalesce in a puff of smoke, 
and the wizard is gone. You pause in the unexpected silence, gradually realizing that you're free to look around. Turn back to 68 unless the floating skull is with you. <laughs> if it is, turn to 27F. No, I don't think we had, I think we had the skull last time. Yeah, the we did. The skull is in the main room, but yeah. 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 Wow. 68. I, I like that the wizard is so like, I am so busy. I've got stuff to do. Mm -hmm. And then just teleports himself out, like rather than teleporting yeah. you. Yeah. All right. Okay, so when you're free to explore this chamber, you can investigate the floating bottles, the table at the left, reptilian familiar, bookshelves, glowing portal, pentagram on the floor, coat and hat, eyes above the shelf, uh, keys hanging by the door, hourglass, door in the back. Uh, I'm going to choose hourglass. I love the, the combination of the like, like floating bottles. Actually, do I want to do? Pentagram, coat. Keys. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like glowing portals, the definitely the one that's gonna teleport me away, right? Like, there's no way the glowing uh, portal's like, yeah, you fall in. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you don't know that for sure, for sure. I don't, but I mean, I'm gonna choose a, hourglass anyway. A portal, okay. you know, portals you somewhere, presumably. Yeah. Or it brings something to you. Wait, what was it? One twenty. One twenty-five e. Oh, one twenty-five e. Okay. Yeah. For several minutes, you stand and watch the lavender-colored sand shift through the narrow neck of the hourglass near the open doorway. The time, whatever the sand is marking, is about to run out. Do you want to turn the hourglass over? If so, turn to 133G. If you don't want to touch the hourglass, you can look at the other object. Oh, I'm turning it over, baby. There's yeah, no way this ends badly. That was happening. 133G. Time has run out for you to be in this chamber. You find yourself magically transported to 102, where there's another hourglass. Oh, that was fast. Turn yeah. that one over and come back. Yeah. You, flipped, you flipped it, though. Just yeah. Like, oh, Time I like that you guys out. are like, don't go near the portal. That might just take you right out of here. And it's like, I'll go to the hourglass, Zot. Look, yeah. other things can take you out of there as well. Okay, uh, you can't believe your eyes. 10 you million finally, fireflies. You finally entered a chamber that invites you to relax with comfortable couches. Oh. A smoldering hickory scented fire, food and drink, uh. and cozy warm tapestries on the wall. They all draw you into the room and urge you to unbuckle your weapons, quench your thirst, and relax. You are about to yield to the temptation when you see why, even here, you must maintain your vigilance and be ready to fight quicklings oh. the tiny almost invisible relatives of the brownies are all over the place oh these now, fuckers <laughs> now that you've noticed them uh you realize that they've been here all along holding still and fading into the patterns of the decor so uh, so far though the quicklings have left you alone maybe you can continue to pretend you haven't seen them on the other hand maybe you should attack right now while they aren't sure if you've noticed them or you can try to talk to them so if you look at the art yeah you can see them in the art. Yeah. They're yeah. all just like little elves. Yeah. I like how they're like, it made them sound like they're just blending in, but they're literally just standing out in the open. Yeah. Like that one on the right, that <laughs> one like, on the right's just like chilling. He's like, they're like hiding behind <laughs> stuff. Yeah. I just want to see like a John Travolta elf in the background. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or they were all, it's like that thing where, that thing where like you appear and they all scatter, but there's like one that it was like, oh, huh, oh. we'll just stand yeah. still in the middle of the room <laughs> and hope no one sees me. I'm going to try to talk. I, talking to them is so bad. 97 C. Well, talking to the wizard helped because the wizard just messed. The wizard was like, yeah, see you later. It's true. He left you alone in his room. Until you messed with the hourglass. Yeah. As one of the tiny creatures leaps up onto your shoulder, you smile at it and say, Hello. Say, I'll bet you fellows know a lot about this fairy mound. I'm a stranger here myself. Maybe you can help me. We can, for a price, speaks, uh, speaks the one on your shoulder. As you listen, you discover that the quicklings want gems and magical weapons, but they're not particular about which ones. For each item you give them, they'll tell you something about a chamber in the mound, and you'll be free to look around. Uh, I don't have any items to trade, so. But maybe we could come back here later? Yeah, we might be able to come back. Or so if you're not willing or able to trade, does that mean that you have you to go to 79D? Yeah, you just go to 79D. I guarantee you that if you gave them a bunch of stuff, they'd be like, uh, the, the last room has a wizard. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> very good. They'll be like, yeah, oh, yeah you use oh, yeah. this stuff. Thanks. Yeah. All right, 79D. Sorry, you say, but I'm certain I don't have anything you would want. 
Spiker! Shrieks the quickling on your shoulder, and he takes out a whistle and blows it shrilly. Immediately, all the quicklings in the place pop out and attack you. Turn to 58H. What the hell is a piker? Somebody who reneges on a deal. Uh, mm. uh, a 2-1. 58H. Uh, quickly ready your weapon. Conduct combat. If you win, turn to 70K. <laughs> if the quicklings are too much for you, turn to 63F. Okay, so we have to find the quickling. Uh, it's on the back. The the last page has the yeah. stats. The stats. I think it's. God, the picture of our fighter is, damn, dude. He's got a big mustache. He's got a dumb helmet. Uh, quickling. That's how you know he's strong. Look at that dumb helmet. Yeah. What page uh, was we're it? We're looking for. What page was it? Yeah. We were on 58H. Yeah, we were on 58H. Uh, quickling is... Oh, yeah, what page was the quickling on? Um, I don't know what the page was. One sec. Is it a spriggan? It's not a spriggan, is it? Hang 50, on. Let me go to 58H. Because the page number and like the entry number are different. Yeah, 79D is... Uh... 50, 58H is page... I don't know. I can't see the page number. Maybe it's page 59? I don't know. Because now we need to find quicklings. Mm. Yeah, this is weird. They're not on this list. So you win. So it's free is what you're saying. There's no price on it, so it's free. Yeah, I'm going to... Yeah. I don't actually know. Yeah, there's no... I don't see quickling on here. Uh, so we were at 102 originally. Does anything actually match 102? Are they pixies? They might be... Is there pixies? Oh, there's pixie. Nothing matches 102. There's 21. There's Pixie. That's the best I can come up with. Ah. There's not another page, no. I'm just going to say a Pixie, but a Pixie is like one dragon. thing. Yeah, it's You weird. know what? For the sake of ease, I'm going to rule that I just absolutely fucking demolish these things. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, like, or, if you, a... or if you want to, just roll for it. <laughs> Just, oh, yeah, true. just roll for nothing oh, yeah, in it. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right, Beach. Yeah, yeah. We'll roll. We'll roll. Yeah. One to one to six, we win. Seven yeah. to twelve, we lose. That's okay. it. Let's flip a coin. <laughs> I don't know. You're bigger than they are. Excellent. We win. All right, one. Oh man, this game's easy. All right, seventy <laughs> k. Let's go. Seventy. Hey. Somehow you and your weapon have to defeat all the little quicklings in the room before they can use their poison daggers on you. <clears throat> uh, at least you hope you got them all. You're free to explore this sumptuous room now, but you'd better watch out. Turn to 102. Okay. okay. Well, it's weird that they, uh, weren't, that they didn't work there, but... Eh. Okay, so we're in the room. Uh, there's a tapestry over the fire. Tapestry on the left wall, pillow beneath it, tapestry on the right of the fireplace, fireplace, mantelpiece, footrest, table, cloak over chair, cloak over couch. Mm. Um, so far, we have yet to be able to look at more than what, like the first thing we look at in every room does something yeah. bad. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the case is that everything ends up doing something to us. I'm going to say no matter what. tapestry on the left wall. Let's go to 89D. 9D. You stand facing the largest tapestry in the room. It's a wonderful creation of light and color, showing a happy maiden swinging in a sun-streaked bower. It's so real that you feel you could walk right into the picture. Oh, no. One corner of the tapestry is turned aside, and you can see a dark hole in the wall behind it. If you want to investigate the hole, turn to 129M. If you want to study the tapestry more closely, turn to 92H. Mm, both of these seem bad. <laughs> I don't like either of these. We're Let's probably see. dead no matter what we do. So you can see uh, the hole there. Oh, there's like a serious hole. How big is the hole? Let me see. Big enough for you in to the get picture, into, In the picture, it's a pretty oh, big. Oh, yeah, that's really big. Like the, the that... tapestry is clearly like just covering a big hole in the wall. Okay, so big hole in the wall means big rat in the wall. Right? That's yes. how that's just the logic I'm using. I'm True. trying to think I'm trying yep. to think like this book. Okay. Yep. Big mm -hmm. hole, big rat. Rats bite. Okay. Not yep. fighting the rat. What, what, so what are the chances of you like going into the tapestry and teleporting somewhere? 
See, that's also, also investigate tapestry, teleported to another room. So, lesser of two weasels, eat weasels. Yeah, the lesser of two weasels. Yeah, that old expression. It's the lesser be... <laughs> of two weasels. <laughs> we got we got the lesser of two weasels. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Let's go. Let's let's uh, investigate the hole. One twenty nine M. I have decided to investigate the hole. Vaguely erotic. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. One twenty nine M. You find yourself wondering why the corner of the large tapestry is turned back from the hole in the wall behind it. It appears to be an exit, but did someone just go down it? Do you dare follow? You're not sure how else you're going to get out of here. You want to go into the hole in the wall, turn to 55E. If not, keep looking around 102. 55E. Oh, you're going to go for it. Oh, yeah. I'm not a coward, Beach. All right. Are you kidding me? So we're just yeah, I mean, you had an out there. That's great. Don't, don't care. <laughs> you creep into the darkness, a weapon held ready. You try to listen as you move, but the rustling and other sounds from your own clothing and possessions prevent you from hearing anything else. <laughs> We're just like so loud. Like, like, all, I can, all I can hear is my large wallet. Yeah. <laughs> bronze, yeah. Your bronze armor. Yeah, it's probably pretty yeah. like super <laughs> like banging around like, oh man. Uh, okay. Your own clothing and possessions prevent you from hearing anything else. Finally, you stop and hold perfectly still, listening intently. In the stillness, you think you hear a brushing sound, a clink. That was and not a brushing sound. <laughs> <laughs> it was close enough. Yeah. <laughs> the sound of scurrying somewhere ahead of you. If you want to go on, turn to 54B. If you'd rather go back, turn to 51E. Okay, Twitch chat, don't you say beach? No, we need to encourage beach. Okay? <laughs> this is a place of encouragement. Okay. Every Even if time you don't like any it. of us do it, does anything, I want you all to be like, "Wow, good job." It's good when Beach does that. Yeah, oh, I love it when Beach does that. Okay. All right. This is the, we're entering a it's, a it's a give and take relationship. Okay. Yes, are, and <laughs> so are, okay. are we going on? Oh yeah, fifty four right. B. Don't kill me. me. Sick. Alert and prepared for anything. You move on down the dark tunnel. You either you neither see nor feel anything that could have been the source of the strange noises. Are your eyes playing tricks on you? Do you really see a faint reddish glow up ahead? Moving carefully, you near the glow. Jabbing at the source of it with a sword, <laughs> you discover that the object is hard. You wait, watch for a moment, then finally pick it up. It's a gem! The large stone glows with its own faint light. Perhaps it's something helpful, and perhaps it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, you know how we do. I'm, I'm not <laughs> some kind of gem expert. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing about it gives an indication one way or another. Turn to 84. Nice. All right. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, it could be anything. Oh, oh this place. Uh, you should write down that you have a gem, a glowing gem. Oh, yeah. One red gem. So, oh, is it red? Well, it's no it's idea. glowing, too. So if, it, like, if, they ask, if somebody asks us for a magic item, we could probably give it yeah. to them. It would have been great to have for the pixies back there before I butchered them all in cold blood. <laughs> like, oh, I could have just gave them this. Oh, well. <laughs> Nuts. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, we've been here before. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I remember this. Okay, wherever you are, there's a dance going on when you arrive. The dancers are tiny sprites called uh, Aramis. They have come Aramis. out of their underground riverbank homes to dance in the moonlight. They are dressed in short silken costumes, and they wave their thin wings rhythmically as they dance. The pungent scent of the brew they are drinking and the toe-tapping melody the little band is playing makes you want to join them. Suddenly, you start to wonder, is there danger here? Perhaps they are trying to make you want to join them. If you think there's something strange going on here and want to fight the anatomies, atom yes, yeah, atomies, yeah. Atomies, turn to 51K. However, on second thought, they look sociable enough. Perhaps you should try to talk to them. Of course... You could just ignore them and search the area. These fairies are dancing and they look happy, but are yeah. they too happy? It must be a trap. <laughs> yeah. It's just, you just hear the shh. <laughs> like, oh, there's only one choice to make. Uh, no, I think like picking a fight, unless, unless they state, like, I think like attacking first is always bad, right? If they give me the choice, like, do you want to attack them? It's like, no, absolutely not, because you have some stupid thing that just kills me immediately, right? Ah. Um, 
That's that. That's true. Right up into the point where something's like, well, you should have attacked it first. Yeah, I remember because last time we were here, we were the bard, and I remember we played some music for them, but the fighter wouldn't do that. Right. Right. Fighter would be like the fighter would look at the violin and be like, nah, I'm good. I think the fighter would just like. I think our fighter is an idiot enough that he would try to talk to him. Okay. So I'm gonna say 55 G. I think the fighter's a moron because he's like, all I know how to do is drive a car. You know what I mean? Yep. That's the only thing I'm good at. And so when he can't do that, he just tries to fucking, I don't know. He doesn't know <laughs> me, how to operate. Me and my horse Uber. Yeah. You stand there, enjoying the Atomy's music and the dancer's obvious pleasure in their movement until one tiny sprite drops out of the dance, looks up at you and says, it's mighty fine weather for dancing. You agree that it certainly is and ask if they mind if you listen. If you're the fighter, turn to 59L. You're the bard. Turn to mm. sixty-seven J. Oh, this is probably no. this is probably where you could play the music if you wanted. If you were the bard, yeah, we're dead. Oh, we're not dead. Okay. Well, says the sprite. How about joining us in the dance? It sounds like fun, you say. But how can I keep from hurting you? I'm far too large. Well, hmm. Well, it could be up to us to stay out from under your feet. We could do that by dancing in the air, away from your feet. If you think that sounds like a good idea, turn to 75J. <laughs> if you decide to decline the offer, turn to 79L. Unfortunately, the only kind of dancing I know is mosh pit. <laughs> yeah! yeah. I, just start doing, I just start windmilling and swing kicking. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I'm here to party. Kicking pixies around. Uh, it's like this the last time I was at a pixies concert. Yeah. <laughs> I'm upset about that one. I man. bet you would be. Uh, oh, both of these seem bad. <laughs> yep. BGS, very good, Twitch chat. You passed the test. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very good. Continue. <laughs> uh, man. Well, are you playing as the fighter? Or are you playing as somebody who has a brain in their head? 79L, it is. <laughs> Wait, you declining? Yeah. For them to swing, for them to dance in the air. Yeah, near your head, probably. Yeah. Please, God, don't kill me. I don't think so, you say. I'm not a very nimble dancer, but thank you for asking anyway. Well, I must say that you're right. That's right unneighborly of you, exclaims the Atomy in a huff. I guess this isn't a good night for dancing after all. As the little creature snaps his fingers, all the other Atomies, both dancers and musicians, disappear. So, too, does the leather pouch, pouch lying on the opposite bank. Big fiddle and the potion bottle remain, however, turn to 84. Oh, that was not as bad as I thought it would be. Oh, everyone just left. Yeah. Okay, so. They're like, we could dance in the air. And you're like, nah, I still probably shouldn't do it. The path is gone. Or the pouch is gone. The Sorry. Yeah. The pouch is gone, but. Everybody else is left. And every, yeah. But everything else is around. Yep. I'm going to say a large hole in the bank. 100 H. Okay. The large hole in the bank looks big enough for a man to crawl into. You put your head inside. You know. You put your head inside and see that you will indeed fit. If I fit, I sit, you know. This hole was made for me. <laughs> yeah. Moving on your hands and knees, you find that the hole is the entrance to a small tunnel through the earth. From time to time, it widens a little, enough so that you can stretch out a bit. Suddenly, when you're stretching, you feel a movement by your side. You neither hear nor see anything, but when you arrive at 102, you find that all your magical keys are gone. <laughs> Joke's on you, game. No magical keys. And we're back at 102. Yep. yep. Oh, yeah. We're back here. So, if you've been here before, uh, the quick things have vanished. Yeah. And it's exactly, you have a choice of leaving, investigating things as you just right. visit. Uh, okay, I'm going to investigate the tapestry again and look at inside the tapestry. We've demonstrated a loop. Yeah, 89. Okay. Let's go to 89D. Yep. And then we will. So 89D, the tapestry. So last time we went into the hole, we got the gem. Uh, I'm going to look at the tapestry more closely. So 92H. You reach out and touch the golden swinging girl and feel 
and feel real flesh. Quickly, you touch other places on the tapestry. It's all real. You can feel the sunshine, smell the breeze. If you want to step into the picture, turn to 78p. Otherwise, check out the hole behind it. <laughs> oh, we're going in, baby. 78p. Right. Mm, 78. P. Suddenly, the warmth of the quickling's room begins to feel stuffy to you, and you yearn to be in the sunshine of the tapestry. Stepping into the picture, you find yourself in a beautiful meadow, but there's no sign of the girl. Maybe because you were, like, poking her. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Like, That's, this sucks. It's being harassed by some dude. Heaving a sigh of relief, you breathe thanks that there is no sense of menace here. You are in a calm, beautiful outdoor world where little fairy folk laugh and chatter, chatter and buzz around. A human-sized swing hangs from a bough, seeming to beckon you to enjoy it. As you stand there, enjoying the sunshine and lazy drifting clowns, several of the little fairies fly over to your head. You look up, them, look up at them and smile until you see them preparing to sprinkle you with something. <laughs> Oh man, this is our character is an idiot, dude. It's just like every time he's <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is that fairy dust? You ask, somewhat alarmed, because you've always heard that fairy dust could make humans do weird things. Yes, it is. <laughs> A tiny <laughs> lilting voice replies, Please let us sprinkle some on you. We guarantee that it will only be helpful. Helpful? For hoopst. If you're willing to let the fairy sprinkle you with fairy dust, turn to 34J. If you're not, turn to 64. This is so bad. Yep. There's no way this ends well for me. What, what you are you talking do? about? The fairy's saying it'll be helpful. A fairy mm. wouldn't lie to you, would he? Mm, sure, 34J. I'll let him. All don't right. kill me, don't 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 kill me. Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. The moment you say yes, the fairies begin to swoop and leap and dive around you, laughing and chattering all the while. One by one, they skitter into the sky above your head and scatter a tiny handful of sparkling dust on your head and shoulders. Although you hear or feel a faint twinkling song when the fairy dust lands on you, you feel nothing more. No wonderful changes, no mind-boggling visions, nothing. That's all? You ask, somewhat disappointed. That's all. They reply and giggling and they fly away. Well... Guess I might as well have a look around. <laughs> just... yep. at, some, at some point, some, it's going to be like, if you got showered with fairy dust, turn to 55. Yeah. You win. We're going back to 44. Okay. Neat. Uh, okay. So we can investigate a mushroom, a pouch hanging in the tree, a gate, a swing, a flying fairy bottle, or a path through the flowers. Well... There's, I, I love all the right. bottles that are there's, there's just like all these bottles just kind of floating in the air. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's just actually every room has had like a floating bottle of some kind. Uh, I'm going to say pouch hanging in tree. Right. That's never going to end well or badly, right? 68F. So, hanging from the same bow of the tree that supports the swing is a leather pouch. If you were sprinkled with fairy dust, turn to 67D. If you weren't, turn to 60G. Well, yeah, we know. I was sprinkled with fairy dust. 67D. As you stare at the pouch, you begin to perceive an red, or a red aura around it. If you still want to check it out, turn to 10A. If you're getting the pouch at the request of the dragon flowers, take it and return to 34D. Well, I am not, but I can't do anything else, so we have to go to 10A. Okay. But it had, oh, so it has... bad, right? So we've been informed that there's a red glow around it. Yeah. You place the leather pouch on the ground before you and pull it open. Immediately, you hear a voice from within it. Well, now, what would you do, or what would you be doing opening the pouch of Chu Chahulain on such a fine day as this? Might I be telling you of a wonderful offer I can be making? All you need to do is put a magical weapon in me, <laughs> and I'll be returning it to you spick and span and all sharpened like the keenest blade the gods could ever devise. It will even have increased powers. Now, Will you be taking me up on my offer? You find yourself a little overwhelmed by the sheer number of words that have poured forth from the pouch, <laughs> but you give serious consideration to the offer. If you want to put a bladed weapon in the pouch to get it sharpened, turn to 44E. If not, hang the pouch back on the tree and go back to 44. There is 
Well, there's, I, I know this is a bad idea. Uh -huh. but the, greed, the greed in me is like, well, but the, what give if? into the greed. Why not? <laughs> what if, but, but what but the, if? Like the whole point, the the fairy dust made it glow yeah. red. That's yeah. got to mean something, right? I think it's um. Maybe it's maybe it's a good glowing red. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the sword in. I'm gonna put heart seeker in. Oh yeah. Please, 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 the, please. please. The, fairies, the fairies are gonna be like, well, we tried. <laughs> I think it's pronounced Kukulain. Ah, Kukulain. Yeah. Choosing yeah. the weapon you want sharpened, you place it inside the pouch, which seems to have a magically unlimited capacity. You pull the pouch shut and settle down to wait a minute. You wait and you wait, <laughs> but nothing happens. Finally, you ask the pouch, what well, weapon? what happened to my weapon? The voice comes from the pouch again. Hmm. It seems like taking a little longer than usual. I'll tell you what. Why don't you go put another weapon in me and I'll work on them both together. Yeah, that's a ticket. Give me another weapon. You don't have any other weapons. <sighs> if you want to stick another weapon in the pouch, turn to 39A. If you don't, turn to 46G. I don't have another weapon. What if I just grab the pouch and just... Like hit it against the tree or something, you know? You yeah. Know? Just <laughs> whack. <laughs> Ow. It's a pyramid scheme for weapons. If you give me two weapons now, you'll get four later. <laughs> like, oh, sick. 46G. I think I just lost my sword. Yep. You stare at the pouch in angry silence. Finally, you exclaim in consternation, that blasted pouch is eating my weapons. You kick the leather bag as if it were a football. Wait a second. Do footballs exist? <laughs> Uh, maybe they mean like a soccer ball kind of football like <laughs> yeah but soccer doesn't exist now anyway <laughs> i guess it, it might but this is the weirdest thing in this book right now yeah uh if it were a football <laughs> and it soars off into the trees you shamefacedly accept that you ought to be kicking yourself for falling for the bug the bags act all you want to do now is get out of the place you search for an exit turn it forward for. oh wow why did i put my weapon in the bag <laughs> Uh, you were warned. Oh, we'll find another one. You were warned. Oh, we'll time find warp! More. Oh, yeah. Boop. I what? used the time warp. Time warp, ah. time warp, time warp, time warp, time warp, time warp. <laughs> Give me that back. Ah, oh, yes. Yes. So we're back to 44, but yeah. we're not going we to We still the have our weapon. Touchdown! You may proceed with the touchdown emotes. Touchdown is all good. All right. Okay. Yeah. He's just like, I want my sword back. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're not doing the pouch. Let's do the mushroom. Six, 66C. Uh, rising out of the grass near the swing is a huge solitary mushroom. Surprised, you see that the cap is divided into four sections, each one a different color. And on each section of the cap are written the words, eat me. No, eat me. Fucking <laughs> mushroom. If you are willing to take a bite out of one section of the strange mushroom, turn to 43F. Otherwise, turn... I got to try, man. Yeah, what you, you do. 43F? Oh, man, we're going to die. <laughs> 43F. You bend down and take a bite from the pink section of the mushroom. It you don't get to right. choose? <laughs> you know, just, you just, you just start eating. You're just like... <sighs> oh, okay, take a bite from the pink section of the mushroom. It tastes all right. Flat, but not horrible. You're chewing it when a fairy appears by your head and says, I've been commanded to give you some information about this place. Whatever you do, don't eat the mushroom. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Listen well. If you swing hard enough, you'll reach the sky. Well, all right, you think. Strange. But why not? At least in this weird place. If you want to take another bite of this or bite into another section of the mushroom and maybe get more information, turn to 70E. If you decide to leave the mushroom, turn to 44. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty hungry. I'll keep eating. Yeah. 70 e. Got ourselves a little please. push your luck mechanic going on here. Please, 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 please. please, please. <laughs> Swallowing the last of your first bite, you take a second bite, this time from the green section. It doesn't taste so good. In fact, it makes you sick to your stomach. Don't eat the You're green just vomiting up what you swallowed. <laughs> You're just vomiting up what you swallowed when another fairy arrives, commiserates with you, and says, I've been commanded to give you some information about this place. Listen well. A wizard awaits beyond the gate. If you want to bite another section of the mushroom, turn to 8A. Otherwise, All right. 44. At least that didn't well, actually like hurt you. So yeah. 
This is, so they're telling you so the 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 swing is going to lead you to an air place. The mm-hmm. gate I get, might take you back to the wizard place. Yeah. yeah. The map well, keeping... the map of like what pages lead to which pages in this has got to be really confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter what they tell us because we're still eating mushrooms. Of course we are. You just threw up. You need to have something to settle your stomach. <laughs> ah! mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't Why eat another you keep bite. Eating? I don't know. It's just, so... <laughs> it's just delicious. Uh, a. The third section of mushroom, this one is brown in color, doesn't taste good either. In fact, you can't even swallow it, and it burns your mouth so badly that you lose one life point. Mm hmm. You're just coming to your senses when yet another fairy lands on your shoulder, pats you gently, and says, I've been commanded to give you some information about this place. Listen well. The path will lead you to a solution. There's still one piece of mushroom left, a red piece, but things have been going from bad to worse with each bite. On the other hand, you are getting information. The one fairies the are all like piece. waiting behind the tree, being like, he's not going to eat the last piece. Okay, <laughs> I no bet way. you he will not. He will eat the last piece. No, seriously, you think he's going to eat the last piece? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, turn to 101D. If not, you feel the urge to flee this place. Um, yeah, 101D it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Yeah, you got to find out. You don't stop out, right? halfway through a mushroom. Or even three quarters of a way. Stealing your... <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at like... Like, I, can and then, I can eat this. I can eat this. It's like, did the human eat the mushroom? Yeah. <laughs> but what what about the part that tastes bad? Yeah, he kept eating it. And then the yeah, part that just, burns you? Yeah, yeah, he kept eating yeah. it. Weird. It's like, what about the last part? Yeah, I ate the whole thing. That's dumb. <laughs> Stealing yourself for something truly awful, you bite into the red colored section of the mushroom. It immediately sends a shock through your system that takes away two life points. Oh. But as you stop reeling, a fairy flies to you and says, I've been commanded to give you some information about this place. Listen well. The pouch is evil. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Thanks, Tip. With the simple statement, the fairy flies away and you remain, holding the remnants of the magical mushroom in your hand and nursing a serious ache in your stomach. But then your eyes light on the mushroom stem in your hand. It isn't an ordinary stem. It's a magical key. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Sure, why not? There's some <laughs> Alice in Wonderland level stuff going on here. Oh, oh it's a key. Sick. You use it. In uh, you lock? take the. Wow. Sorry. Yeah, you get. You take the. You can take the key with you and use it on any lock that requires a key. Wow, it's a skeleton key. That's so sick. We got rewarded for a thing. Right. They actually rewarded us. We didn't get punished. Well, we lost three health points, but that's fine. That's a drop in the bucket. Yep. We're yeah, gonna need those keys, I think, too. Oh. All right. 44. Just make sure. Make sure we don't go through that uh, tunnel again, where the thing still steals all your magic keys. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We got rewarded for a thing. Okay. Uh, so do I want to go on this? I can go up to the sky. Or they said the path is towards solutions, right? Yeah. Path yeah, leads you towards a solution. I mean, that seems like a good idea. When path, I was a kid. Path through flowers. When I was a kid, whenever I was on the swing, I wanted to go over top. Oh, yeah. Right? Over bars? Yeah. Always wanted to go over bars. Never did. Never once in my life. But you know what? That's, gonna, that's about to change right now. 94C. Oh, baby. We are going we're for a go swing. The, we're not going to go to the place that they're like, there's a solution there? No. Absolutely right. not. Boy. <laughs> what are you doing here? Come on. Paul. 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 Hold up. Let's make sure we're on the same page here. Uh, before we go on the swing, though, let's we should run some ads. It's already been an hour. Oh, good idea. It's been, it's, we're going to run some quick ads. Everybody get up and stretch. I'm going to go get some water and... All right. We'll be, right we'll be back. back in just a few minutes. Hello. Welcome back to Dice Friends. Hey. Oh, oh I'm dying, Squirtle. So, uh, yeah, we are back in the it, Fairy Mound. I, I changed I was, my shirt. Oh, very nice. nice. Oh. <laughs> Bike Club. So, don't talk about Bike Club. Just, you know, yeah. wear, wear a t-shirt advertising it. Yes, that's how it works. Adam, this is your shirt. Oh, sick. I just got a package from PMC, and it had all the shirts in it. So <laughs> this right. is your shirt. my shirt. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. 
So you're ready to go on a ride on a swing or what? I, hell yeah. I, I, I do like, with all the complaining that we do about, you know, the kids like, oh, it's so arbitrary and stuff. For mm-hmm. the pouch, there's a thing that we we got a thing that made it glow red and ignored it. Yeah. And now we're about to ignore the, the fairies told us that uh, the path through the flowers would do something good for us. I uh-huh. mean, it says it would bring about a solution, but what kind of yeah. solution are they talking about? Okay. Right? Are we talking about the final solution, which is death? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on, Paul. All right, all right, right. Really... Look, I'm th- I'm uh, I'm on like I'm on like 4D chess here, <laughs> 5D even. <laughs> Which With loops time back travel. around to being a yeah, it loops back to being a mistake. When I'm playing 5D chess, I'm trying to be too smart. Yep. Yeah. All right. In the middle of Nine... all the tiny fairies still flying around this place, it seems strange that the swing is so definitely intended for humans. You feel irresistibly drawn to sit on it, but your eye is caught by the writing on the swing seat. Do you want to study the writing or sit down and swing? What were you going to say, Paul, before I cut you off? Mm-hmm. Uh, remember? I, I just, what happened to the lady that was on the swing? I she guess, disappeared. Yeah, maybe she went up into the sky. Yeah. There's no way my character would read instructions, right? I... <laughs> Look. <laughs> make the yeah. rules okay yeah. i just have to sit down and start swinging so it's ADAD, true. Man. ADAD. i mean like a, a swing is a lot like a chariot yes my character knows how to drive a chariot it's, it's basically to... a chariot and then the tree is the horse yes yeah it's basically what's happening here it's like yeah. a vertical chariot yeah a wonderful feeling of freedom overwhelms your initial feelings of childishness as you seat yourself firmly in the swing and start pumping. <laughs> Vaguely erotic. If you are the bard, turn to 78 E. If you're the fighter, turn to 38 J. 38 J it is. <laughs> it's the elf. Is this it? So does this play as an interrupt? <laughs> yes, I think this so. Stops, yeah. This stops whatever you were gonna do, and you do whatever you're gonna do with the elf, and then you go back to what you did before. Okay. So uh, we're at seven now. Yeah. Which means you are meeting the melancholy elf. Okay. Where are the entries? Are the back? Uh, no. Um, you go to thirty-five L. Oh, thirty-five L. Okay. Thirty-five. Oh, oh man, I'm excited. We found the elf, man. 35L. This elf this elf's about to hold this L, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh 30 oh 35L. Yep. All action comes to a stop around you as everything goes dark. Suddenly, a sad looking elf comes into view and heaves a deep sigh. Mm. Just what I needed. He groans. <laughs> Another human to spoil my life. <laughs> He's like Marvin the Android. Oh, God. <laughs> you, you aren't sure how to respond, but the elf doesn't seem to be listening anyway. I was in love with a beautiful elven princess, but a human came along and stole her heart away. I am not pleased to see a human, but I guess I shouldn't really take it out on you. I will grant you a choice, human. You may share my burden, or you may go... Tra- <laughs> Maybe he means it figuratively. Yeah. You may share my burden, or you can go jump in a lake. Now choose. If you want or to share the elf's the burden. Yeah. If you want to share the elf's burden, whatever that means, turn to 82G. If you prefer to jump in a lake, turn to 86G. Uh Man, I just know that helping the elf is going to be so bad. <laughs> I just know. It's like I, the one that I want. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to help burden. 82G. 82G? Don't kill me. 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 Please, God. Please. Wait, what? The elf, a magic user of awesome power, appears to be dying of a broken heart. Because you share in his suffering, you now strike successfully with one point less than you did before. However, you also share in the elf's magical abilities, so now you have the power to fire one magic bolt 
in each new chamber you visit. The bolt, which never misses, inflicts five points of damage. Yeah! Magic missile. Uh, Magic missile. <laughs> yeah! Let's go! I love the idea that you walk into a chamber and just magic missile, like, just don't even look. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the yeah. first guy you meet gets hit by a magic missile regardless of what happens. There doesn't even have to be anybody in the room, Paul. I'm just going to shoot it right away. Yeah. I'm just going to walk in. It's like, time. did somebody say liberation? And I kick open the door, bang! I just start shooting everything. <laughs> it's time to liberate this fairy mound. Liberated. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's, there's a great story uh, from uh, as a in we were in playing uh, uh some D and D thing with some friends, and we were just like a group was just like walking down the hallway down a hallway yeah. in the thing, and for no reason one of the players is like, I start readying a wall of swords spell, <laughs> <laughs> and the DM's like, uh, okay, and then we keep walking for a bit, and the DM's like. Okay, as you round the corner, and the guy, the guy is just like, cast the Wolf Sword spell above me, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, okay, the <laughs> goblin that dropped from above. <laughs> <laughs> Goes through the wall of swords. It was just like one of those like red things. It's like I have a, a similar know? story. I don't want to get too distracted, but I heard I had a friend. Then I want to tell mine after yours. Tell me the story about the D D game they played. And at one point, they were the whole party ends up at this castle, right? Yeah. So they show up at the castle, and the the barbarian who was in their party just goes, "The king's a doppelganger," and throws his axe at the king. <laughs> fucking hits him critical strike, kills the king dead on the spot. King was a fucking doppelganger. Ganger. They just like <laughs> he just like he just nailed it cold. <laughs> it's like, it's like I killed thing. I killed thirty kings yeah. bef- with that move beforehand, but I got it right yeah. this time. I think the DM on the spot made every the whole kingdom was just doppelgangers, right? Because he was like, oh no. I was like, okay, yeah, the king's a doppelganger, but then everyone else in the castle is also a doppelganger, and they had to like uh, fight. It was a cool little like nice change it, like they had to fight their way out kind of thing. That's like, cool. Okay. Yeah, it was neat. In in uh, in in a game I played with Ian and, and Corey and a bunch of my other friends, uh, uh, fourth edition, we um, we were in a dragon's tower. It was only like three stories. Don't get excited. Yeah. And we were just we we had teleported to his horde, which is the top. It had no roof on it. We're like, oh shit, we're in a dragon horde. We got to get out of here. So we started going down to the second floor, and when we are right, so like so the, in the middle, and when we did. You could hear something crawling big, crawling up the side of the uh, side of the, the the thing. We're like, that's the dragon. Has to be the dragon. Whatever. So my friend is like, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pr- uh, ready s- uh, spear of light or whatever the fuck it was, lance of light or whatever it is. He was like playing whatever he was playing, yeah. and uh, and they're like, why? And he's like, well, if something comes through that window. It's gonna go off the moment it like I'm I'm using it the moment it comes through the window. So I'm basically mm-hmm. getting myself ready, and so yeah, sure enough, the um the the dragon poked his head through the through the window, <laughs> and so that auto triggered the spell, uh and and the, and our DM uh, our friend Brian was like, roll for it because he had to roll to see if he was gonna hit or not. He's like you just don't you just don't get it for free. You have to roll for it, right? He's like yeah. oh, right, yeah, I guess I do, and he rolls. And he misses, mm. and and it's it's spear of light. So it illuminate. It hits the wall, illuminates the entire room, and we're all like, "Fuck!" Now the dragon has seen all of us. Yeah, <laughs> knows where we all are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he and he and he roared, and uh, everyone had to do a saving throw against fear. Everybody lost, mm. except me. So now it was all on me to save the party. <laughs> that's so sick and yeah, the dragon's like who the fuck and then just like lines light everything lights up he's like hey what the fuck <laughs> hey. who's that guy <laughs> who's that yeah hey i see you in there yeah yeah i did uh, save the party but that's a different story okay so where was the swing do you remember uh 38j 38j yeah so yeah. now we just uh we just continue so on the way we we, we hit things on and we actually hit things on an 11 or less now right it's, no, it's, no, it's a ten or less still, but you do oh. one less point of damage. Oh, I do less damage, but I shoot a fireball. Okay, yeah, 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 or a yeah. lightning bolt. Right. Okay, so minus one damage. So you do six points of damage instead of seven. Fire. 
That sucks. Never mind. I thought I did more damage. No. No, no, mm. you're sharing in his pain. Yeah, yeah but you get to, but now you get to, like, cast a bolt immediately, which is fun. Yeah. You can do it once a chamber. Yeah. So unless you're hitting the guy more than five times, you're still coming out a hit, right? Yeah. Does that mean you have to pick a, you have to pick a new number for the elf, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. I have done so. The little... The little fairies twitter around you, enjoying your obvious pleasure as you swing. You close your eyes and feel a rush of joy, but then the back and forth motion stops. Vaguely erotic. You open your eyes in alarm and find yourself up in the sky. Turn to 16. I think this we've been here before. This is the one thing I remember crystal clear. Okay. Yeah, okay. How did I get here, you wonder? Yeah. Is you this not my beautiful cloud? <laughs> yeah. You look down at your feet and marvel at the fact that you are standing on a cloud. And you have no real idea of how you got here. And then literally you realize... stairs. <laughs> and then you realize something else. There's a lovely woman sitting in a nearby cloud smiling at you. You recognize her as a sylph. You want to pretend you haven't noticed her and investigate the intriguing things that are scattered around the clouds. Turn to 59D. You want to talk to the woman. Turn to 54D. Last time we talked to her, right? I I think at one point I can't remember. I'm going to try to ignore her. 59D. This is, not, this is not my beautiful sylph. Yeah. Okay. There's a key. Oh, three. We have to go to 59D first. I oh, think. 59D. The sylph proceeds to ignore you too. Go back to 16 and decide what you want to look for. Damn. So she's just going to let, I remember, this is, I remember, okay, so there's a key, bow and arrows, horn, object under the woman's hand, cloud creature, view looking down, cloud steps. So the bow was the bow of whatever it's called. I'm going to go over and take the bow because it's good. Okay. I know it's good. 34F. Okay. The bow is actually sick. I think I remember. 34F. 34F. Moving carefully from one cloud to the next, you manage to reach the bow and quiver full of arrows. You presume they belong to the sylph until you see the runes on the quiver. Yeah, they say, arrows of never fail monster slaying. <laughs> These arrows should be of incalculable help in dealing with the kind of monsters that you've been meeting. If you want to take the weapon with you, take a note and turn to 26G when you decide to use it instead of rolling for combat. Okay, so. Did you arrows. actually use this bow? No. <laughs> but now we don't have a sword, so we're going to need it. No, yeah, you do. No, I used the time Oh, board. we did. You're right. We went back, right. So when we use this, we have to turn to 26G. Um, okay, so now we go back to 16. Um, there's a pic. There's art for her, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can see it. Um. Okay, the horn is really good too. I'm gonna go grab the horn. I like that she has freckles for some reason. Like it's just, it's just a nice touch. Yeah, the horn is actually sick. Okay, yeah, the jewel of the horn sparkles brightly against his white, the white cloud. You pick it up and notice that the runes are engraved around the horn's circumference. They identify the horn as a horn of monster destroying. If you want to take this magical weapon with you, make note of it to turn one sixteen D when you face a creature and want to use the weapon. This is what we were, we were threatening everybody. We just turned, they weaponized us last time. We had yeah. this horn, right? And anytime anybody talked shit, I was like. <laughs> 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 oh, good. Anybody. Be a shame if I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, horn of monster. I mean, I guess to be fair, oh, yeah. there don't appear to be any monsters up here in the clouds. <laughs> I guess all these weapons of monster slaying work. I, I think the joke was last time it was like, what if we just blew the horn and we blew up? Oh yeah, what God. if we were the monster? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no, no. That's how you find out. Yeah. Um, 116. Okay, 16. And then let's check out the key, 94B. I actually don't think we got to the key last time. Okay. 94B. Since there's nothing in sight with a keyhole, <laughs> since there's nothing in sight with a keyhole, it seems very strange to see a key sitting on the cloud. You reach out for the key and it immediately says, I am the key of change. I look like a key. <laughs> Why every voice is the same, man? I tried to do a French accent and I can't. I look like a key now, but I can easily become other things. Use me as you will. Vaguely erotic. 
Uh, if you job, don't Gambit. need a key, you can use it as a potion, a ring, or a gem. But once you've decided what it is, the key will not change again. After making your choice, you decide to continue searching the year. This key can be anything. Oh, yeah. Neat. So if it's so when the game is like, if you have a potion, do this. If you have a ring, do this. If you have a gem, do this. Yeah. Or if you have a key, do this. Can I just turn it into fairy dust? Yeah, can we just turn it into some ancient king fairy dust to get the fuck out of here? Yeah, doesn't that just like, can't we just beat the game? Oh, it'd be good. So do we have I mean, it goes to... against the spirit of the game, but I mm -hmm. still was just saying, like, can't we just be like, yeah, it's ancient fairy king dust or whatever, and they're like, oh, yeah. yeah. So it is also do we have to technically a magical now? key. Do we have to decide now? Yes, you have to decide right now what it is. Yeah. But if it you... Can be anything you... of these four things? Okay, so it could be a potion, a ring or a gem well it can also be a key because it's like you know you, if you don't need a key yeah it can also be used any of these things so if you wanted to you could just say i need more magical keys i don't know if you needed that or not but i don't know either but when you <coughs> into a potion what does it do nothing well i imagine it'll be a healing potion is what it'll be probably the same the same well it would be any item that i think already exists in the game yeah so we have you a could, key we have a key and a gem already right yeah i'm gonna turn it into a ring Ring. What kind of ring or is it going to be? Uh, do I get to pick? <laughs> I th Let me just see what there is for items in the game. So you want to make it a ring, I'll let you know what rings there are. Or is the idea that it just turns into like a generic magic ring for in, in situations where somebody's like, do you have a magic ring? Yeah, then you can yeah I think it's, it's like you have a ring or something, right? Maybe. Because <laughs> you have a ring of protection. <laughs> But yes. the bard has a ring of the fairies, and that okay. prevents you from being blinded by any type of magic. So you could probably but, go for that. Well, I think or, it's just like the thing where it's like a, it's just a generic ring, right? And there's like ooh, there's situations like where like if you have something to trade, like mm -hmm. oh, okay, ooh, I'm about a trinket. I'm gonna make it a ring just for the sake of moving on. Okay, uh, sixteen. We're going back. Uh, okay, so keen bow, key bow, horn, object in her woman's hand. I remember that was the triggering for moving on. I'm gonna go talk to the cloud creature. I mean, if she's ignoring you, you're like, uh, eh, let me gra just grab this under your hand. <laughs> One sec here. All right. Uh, as you near the strange little wing winged cloud creature, you get a feeling of imminent danger. You grab a weapon and prepare to fight it. <laughs> it's like a little, blow the horn. It's like a little... You grab a weapon to prepare to fight it, but the cloud creature merely laughs and says, Oh, come on now, let's not be ter so terribly serious. Huh? You say, your weapon wavering? Just leave your weapon alone. In fact, the cloud creature adds, if you want to go down those stairs, I'll come along and give you some good advice. I'm well aware of where those stairs go. Can't you just tell me where they go? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, the sun is shining down there, and I rarely get to go where the sun is shining. So I'm going to take this chance. If you're willing to take the cloud creature with you, turn to 64B. Mm. Um, hmm. 46B. 46B. Mm. Sweet, like cloud dragon, buddy? Sure, 46B it is. Nothing's ever gone wrong. Trusting the denizens of this fairy mound. <laughs> You start down the cloud stairs with the cloud creature continually bumping into you. Finally, you push him away and the creature immediately becomes part of a cloud step. The step says, hold it. Now look down. You do so and see that you are standing over a beautiful meadow with a swing hanging from a tree, beautiful flowers and an intriguing glare. Or a gate. Gate, what did I say? Gate. An intriguing gate. See that leather pouch hanging from the tree? You look carefully and finally nod. Well, don't listen to it. And the step creature can- Wow. Twice now you've been warned. Three times. It was also yeah. glowing red. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> Eels teleport, by the way. Uh, you nod again. <clears throat> Though you don't really understand what you're agreeing to. Saying goodbye to the cloud creature step, you hurry down. The remaining levels of the cloud stairway turn to 44. So we're literally back. We're down. We're back down. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're back here. So okay, remember well, what the other choices the were. Yeah, we're just going to go through the path. Okay. I guess it's the bottle, but like I'm not pushing my luck, dude. <laughs> I think I've gotten away <laughs> with murder already. 118A. Okay. Uh, the moment you step on the path leading out of the fairy meadow, the feeling of pleasure you derive from the meadow increases even more. You have a distinct feeling that a major step in your quest is about to be accomplished. 
you hurry your steps until you were running. Generate a number from one to 12. If you get an odd number, turn to 102D. If you get an even number, turn to 154C. Okay, it's like that scene in uh, Wizard of Oz where they're walking through the poppy field. Eight, even number. Yep. 154C, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please, 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 With relief, you discover that it was just flat 98? Yeah. Yeah, flat 98. Okay. With relief, you discover that there is no one you have to fight immediately in the new chamber you find yourself in. We just kick the door. Fuck oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to blow the horn. And it is with delight that you realize that this pool must be the one that will lead you to the Fairy Queen. Oh, wow. But dismay cancels the delight when you see the water in the pool whirling and plunging downward so violently that it could destroy you. The garden-like setting is certainly beautiful. Everywhere you look, flowers bloom abundantly. Uh, you hear birds whistling in the colorful trees, and the scent of blossoms is carried everywhere on the gentle breeze. But in the center of it all, coming from the pool itself, is a mysterious feeling. Not necessarily evil, but something inexorably taking control of you. Mm. If the talking skull is still following you, turn to 63J. If not, go ahead and decide who you want to, what you want to explore. Uh... Well, we haven't gone wrong investigating every hole in the ground that we found so far. So, really, we have to go look at another hole in the ground. Yeah, 108F. Haven't there, hasn't there only really been one other hole in the ground and it was bad? Eh, well, Took Paul, us to the dancing what? village. That's just, that's just your opinion, man. <laughs> the mound of dirt beside the hole you stand over is fresh and loose as if the hole had just been dug. And yet, when you touch the soil inside the hole itself, it's hard. And feels more like a rocky tunnel than a hole through soft dirt. Maybe you should crawl in and see where it leads. If you want to go down the hole, turn to 112G. If not, look around for some. We're going in the hole. 112G. All your keys are gone. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. You ease your body down into the hole. It seems to open up below you as you descend. But before you get more than a few feet below the ground level, a dog runs. <laughs> A dog runs over to the hole and starts kicking the loose dirt back because you were looking up at the time. <laughs> the dirt lands on your face, damaging you for one life point. How much oh, dirt? No. This game sucks. <laughs> just like <laughs> you random dog just comes by and fills up the hole. Woo! You manage to get the dirt out of your eyes, nose, and ears, then continue dropping down the vertical tunnel. Finally, you land in 28. Uh, 28. You arrive in darkness, and only gradually do your eyes adjust to the fact that you are in an underground mine. Working at the face of the rock is a young gnome who turns towards you with an expression that is half annoyance at being interrupted and half pleasure. It looks as if he's been here a long time. He's put down a rug, and there's a permanent-looking iron gate at the opening to one wide tunnel. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he's bored with his own company. Although you see a large, friendly-looking badger at your foot. Hey! See a large, friendly looking badger nearby hey. watching the gnome work. The gnome makes no threatening gesture in your direction, but maybe you should eliminate him before he changes his mind. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to attack him, turn to 22E. If you'd rather simply let him get on with his work, tell him to. Tell him so and turn to 35D. If you think it would be helpful to talk to him, turn to 24E. What is this? They're just like, yeah, do you want to fight? You should probably kill him. Like, <laughs> He's not armed and unthreatening. Yeah. He must be up to something. Kill him. I gotta see uh, this picture. Oh, yeah. Dude, that, that gnome would probably be played by like Michael Sarah in this movie. <laughs> I kind of, I now just want to, I just want a story about the gnome and his badger buddy like yeah i feel like sitting that... at that little table also well, I, I like the idea of like making your mine homey like putting down a rug and stuff yeah, yeah. 
I'm gonna try talking to the gnome. 24E. 24E. Hello, you say. Please excuse my intru- But the gnome doesn't give you any time to say more. Hey! Maybe you're someone who can help me find it! He exclaims. Find what? You ask. A ring! A very valuable ring. I know it's here somewhere. You'll help me find it, won't you? If you decide you can take time to help him, turn to 38D. If you'd rather not, turn to 31E. Ah, I can help the gnome, right? 38D. All right. I do have a ring that we just got. Maybe we can give him that. 38D. Like magical ring. It's a specific sure! Ring. <laughs> I can help you for a while, you reply. What would you like me to do? Well, I've been thinking and thinking, the gnome says, and I finally figured out that the ring has to be in one of three places. Under that rug, <laughs> up in that hole above my head, or somewhere in this hole where I've been digging. He hands you a spare shovel and asks, where do you want to look? Why you just look under the rug, you idiot? <laughs> I'm upset. He's like, it yeah, might be under there. Too. Did you look there yet? I'm like, no, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we'd be an idiot not to look under the rug. Might as well just get that over with. Yeah. Yeah, 39D. Approaching the round braided rug, you lift it up and discover a round area that seems a different color and texture than the rock around it. You start digging and <laughs> That's that rules. That rules. That rules so bad. Oh my god. Why are you still transported to <clears throat> 98? Oh, this place again. Oh, oh man. Well, now why? you know your two exits to get back here. Why do we? There was... why so do we he, he just has, he's like, oh, there's like a teleporter on the ground there. I'll just cover it with this throw rug. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to dig it! You had to dig it up! It's like I moved the rug and I'm like, wow, the dirt's different. So I started digging and then the gnome's like, the gnome at no point was like, hey, maybe you don't want to do that. That's a teleportation hole. The ring might be in there, but I'm just saying. God damn it. Man. I think, like I don't think everyone's like, oh, you got a shovel now. I'm like, I don't think that we do. I think the shovel was probably like one of those pens you get at banks. It was on a chain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna check out the flowers. 87. Do you want to go back in the hole and go back down there and look somewhere else? I guess we could. I'm just saying, it's up to you. Yeah, I guess like we could just loop it, right? Yeah, we don't have to keep going to new places. We look. Could actually, if you've like... been here before in this adventure, nothing has changed. You yeah. know what you have to do. Ooh. <laughs> well, that's, that's so threatening. <laughs> oh, you know what you have? Okay, I guess we're going back in the hole. I don't sure, know. yeah. Uh, I don't you know what you have to do. Get back in the hole. Back in the hole. Uh, please, please. When do we oh, like the dog yeah. is going to drop stuff on you again. Yeah, oh. you're going to lose another. You lose another damage if you do it. So, is Fine. it worth it? Yeah, one twelve G. We dig down G. the hole, and then twenty eight after that. I think. And then twenty eight. Oh, we lose one point Stupid of life. Dog. <laughs> Stupid dog. Stupid <laughs> dog. The dog is just we, like uh, it's just like on a track. It just like comes out. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Right. Oh, if you've already been here in this adventure, turn to nine J. Oh no! Nine uh, J. It is. We gotta go back. All right. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. If you've already been here and fought the badger, <laughs> you just <laughs> discover that it is magically regenerated. The first thing you must do whenever you enter this area is fight the badger. Roll for combat. Wait, I have to fight the badger? If you no, if you've been here before, been here before. Oh, and left peacefully, you have exact same choices you had when you were here before. Okay, sick. Okay, so we don't have to fight. It's like, yeah, we gotta fight this badger over and over again. Oh uh, no. It's you know, shock the monkey, fight the badger. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty eight. All, All right, right. So now so, we can we can talk to him again. Yeah. And we're also free to explore the chamber, but I kinda wanna try to help him find this ring. Sure. Okay, twenty four E. Let's go back. He's like, oh, yeah, where'd you go? I thought you were helping We're gonna me. help him. <laughs> 38D. Okay, 38D. And then, okay, so we're not going to do the rug. Up in the hole above my head, no. Somewhere in the hole where I've been digging, 59A. I'm going to go to 59A. Here, let me dig where you've been digging. We'll consolidate our efforts in the same place. The gnome stands aside as you bend down and crawl into the hole where he's been working. You see in the faint light that penetrates the hole that he's been digging first on one side, then on the other. 
but there's a chunk in the middle that he's never really cleared. You quickly do so. Immediately, a flash of reflected light catches your eye. Behind you, the gnome bounces up and down with glee, but it's not a ring that you found. It's a bottle, and it looks as if it contains a po- or it looks as if it, it looks as if it contains a potion. When you show it to the gnome, he exclaims, "Not another one! You think I was mining for potion bottles? Well, just put it over there with those others. Then you can look around and see if there's anything you're interested in." Oh, and thanks. The gnome notices you looking intently at the collection of potion bottles on the round table and says, you can take a couple of those if you want. Turn to 23D. Oh, that was strangely easy. 23D. Okay. You study the small collection of bottles, which are different shapes and sizes, all with rock dust covering them. You can choose from among the fast, er, faceted bottle, the tall corked container, the teardrop shaped one, the little round jar, the middle-sized cork bottle in front of the candle, or, if you dug one out for the gnome, the bottle you found. Ooh. Gentlemen? We can, I guess we only get one of them. I mean, normally, you wouldn't be able to find one out for the gnome, right? So it's like, is the one that you just found even more important? Because that's a new choice. That's true. I mean, we're kind of priced into one decision here. The jar. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you're right. It's got to be the jar. 70C. Yeah. Well, you know, it's the it's the grail of the king. Yeah. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill 70. me. Please don't kill me. Please. 70C. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The small round jar contains a healing solve that will restore one life point. You take the jar and continue looking around. Oh. So Anybody remember back what to page that was? 28. We're back 28. to 28. Okay. Or do we go back to? He said, say, "Feel free to take a couple." Do we go back? So we to could the, take yeah. another one. So we, we go, go back, back to twenty three D. Yeah, twenty three D. Um, let's take. Okay, so. So you have a healing salve that gives you one point back. Well, I'm just going to use it now. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I'm back up to forty five. Um. Middle sized cork bottle in front of the candle. It's. I feel like they could have just put numbers on the bottles. Yeah. I'm going to take the teardrop shaped one, 132C. 132. Uh, oh, one. C. Uh, 132C. The teardrop shaped bottle contains what looks like a rich oil. It has a label on it that says pour on weapon. <laughs> If you take this bottle and follow the directions, turn to 18H. Yeah. Why did you why did you use up my weapon melting oil? 18H it is. All Please right. don't destroy my weapon. Please don't destroy my weapon. Please don't destroy my weapon. Please don't destroy my weapon. 18H. 18H. You select the weapon you want the potion on, then wait, open wait. the bottle and Yeah, which potion are you gonna which weapon are you putting it on? On my sword. I do have two ways to kill things, right? Yep. Yep. You select the weapon you want to use the potion on, then open the bottle and pour its contents over your weapon. Instantly, it rusts away to nothing. (laughs) Instantly, it rusts away to nothing. Oh, no, no, there's a thing thing where it's actually how you choose your weapon. Oh, instantly, it rusts away to nothing but a few grains of reddish powder. To choose the exact weapon you used in Ruin, take up number... Or place a number on all your weapons and then generate a number from 1 to 12. The first weapon number that comes up is the one that is destroyed. <sighs> okay, so... so portion, uh, portion of weapon rusting. Yeah, so okay, you've got, so you've got 1 what? to 4 is my sword. You've got three weapons, right? Yeah, so 1 to 4 is the sword. 5 to 8. Yeah, 5 to 8 is the bow. Or the arrows, I guess. Yeah. Bow and arrows, and then nine to twelve is the horn. Okay. Please, God, don't take my sword away from me. I'm, just take the bow. I don't care. Shovel's not a weapon, Twitch yet. <laughs> the horn. The That's horn. your horn. Okay, we lost the horn. That sucks. It's probably like a one use item anyway. Yeah. No, they're weapons. The horn is a weapon. We went over this last time. Yeah, yeah. The war- horn go- and the bow and arrows are technically considered weapons. So, so do you want to go back to the table and push your luck some more? Yeah, absolutely. All right, twenty-three D takes you yeah. back there. 
Okay. Well, that didn't work out for us. I'm sure the next one will be much better. Absolutely. That was the, um, tear, that was the teardrop jar, right? Yep, sure was. Yeah. Uh, let's do the middle-sized cork bottle in front of the candle, 72B. 72B. The bottle in front of the candle contains the gnome's tea that he forgot to drink last week. <laughs> Turn to 28. Yep. All right, well. You, you can keep looking at the bottles if you want, because yeah, you're on the table. No, I'm good. I'm done. I've had enough. <laughs> they destroyed one of my weapons, oh, and I just found tea. You can just go look at 23D. Like, yeah. Bottles on the table is just something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess um, you could go. There's still the, the bottle that you actually found in the wall. Yep. And yeah. can you go back to, can you try for the ring again and try the one other place? Yeah, you can go to the hole high up on the wall if you need to. Well, I'll go back to the tape bottles. I'll search the one we found. Okay. God damn it, I'm The bottle this. you found is 78B. 78B. Oh, shit, yeah! Come on, Paul. Look, look, it's two. It's a happy elf. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, sick. What do I turn to? 27C. Oh, man. 26. <laughs> happy elf. Now, what That's makes an elf happy? All. That's the question. <laughs> Before anything else happens to you in this chamber, you find yourself greeted by an elf fighter. The elf is laughing and reaches out his hand in greeting. I am rare. I'm really very pleased to meet you, sir, he says, trying to stifle a giggle. The funniest thing just happened to me. And I really must tell you about it. The elf spends the next 15 minutes telling you about a practical joke he played on the queen and king of the fairy mound. You can't help but laugh several times during the tale. Somehow, the magic of the elf seems to enter your body, and you notice that you begin to take on a golden glow. The glow stays with you long after the elf leaves you to return to your quest. The magic of the elven glow will cause the next hostile creature you meet to vanish into thin air. You will not have to fight it. Sweet. Boom! Always good to meet the elf. Yeah. Warm glow. So we were, so where we were was at 78B? Yeah. Well. Nice. Okay. Totally, yeah, you should have seen him. The king and the queen had no idea I shit in their duffel bag. <laughs> Like it was he does. I'm he like, he. There's this long 15 minutes, 50 minute lead up, and then he's like, "So yeah, so I took a crap in their duffel bag." <laughs> Just a big idea. triple coiler, like, like yeah. yeah. They're gonna think that it was like one of their dogs. <laughs> okay. What did I? What was I at? Seventy eight B is okay. the bottle you we just found. Uh, the bottle you found. <laughs> The bottle you found contains a key lubricant that will allow you to use any key you have to open the padlock on the iron gate across the tunnel on the far side of this chamber. Now you can go through the gate with any key and open it and to leave the area, turn it 22F. Vaguely hmm. erotic. That is weird. Key lubricant, 22F. So that means I have the mushroom key, right? Yep. You have the mushroom key. That's my only key. No, you have That's the... your only key, I think. The key of change, you've already turned into a ring of some sort. Yeah. Right. My only key is the mushroom key, right? Yep. So right. is going to 22F actually leaving? With it is. Yeah. It takes you to the iron gate at that point. Yeah. Well, but this is the only option we have, so we have to listen to the book, right? Yeah. I guess that's what it wants. It wants you to do this, so. Yeah. The iron gate in the tunnel mouth has a giant padlock on it. You may open it if you have the magical key from the dragon's treasure room or a key lubricant that will allow any other key to work. Turn to 52. If you have neither, okay. you can try to smash the lock. Turn to 40E. So even a magical baby? key won't open it unless it's the specific magical key. I Would guess. it be weird if the key lock, if the padlock was like, lube me? Yeah. <laughs> that is weird, yes. That is weird, yeah. I'm into it. Oh, please stop. Uh, pour it in my mouth. <laughs> now spit on me. Yeah. <laughs> And then shoves it's that getting key weird, bad luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah, get the key deep inside me. <laughs> uh, you find yourself in a tumble down, filthy room inhabited by the two largest and ugliest goblins you've ever seen. 
One seems to be losing to the other in some sort of friendly battle, but their fighting stops as you appear. You know there's no such thing as a good goblin. Damn, all right. Wow. How, do you, how do you know there's no such thing as right? a good goblin? So your immediate urge is to attack. On the other hand, perhaps you should talk to them or simply pretend they aren't there. Why? The wolves growl as you... Wait, the wolves growl? Look at the picture. <laughs> Why? Why was this all behind a big gate? Wait. I think it's like a long hallway leading up to this space. Damn. Why is that one... He's like, step on me. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're just doing some role play. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, man. Maybe we just came in, really. They're doing a photo shoot for their OnlyFans or something. <laughs> um, like they're... Hmm. They're they're it sounds like like it says they're doing some sort of friendly battle, but they're fighting stops when you appear. Like it might be just like a, they're sparring or something. Yeah. What do you mean, Adam? Adam, yes, thank you. Not only do you have to support bees, you have to support me and Paul whenever we say anything. Uh okay, so I mean if I fight them, my warm glow just makes them disappear, right? That's true. So there's no risk. Well, there is a risk if I instantly Unless, die. Or if there's something not, good yeah, but, with yeah. talking to them. There's also but a, if you, there's a gem in one of the goblins' head. Yeah. That's weird that it points that out. I'm you can investigate it. Get real close. I'm going to talk to them. Hell yeah. Here. What's the worst that could happen? Right? If they try to attack, you'll vanish. So Yeah. But the gem goes away, too. I want the gem. 11G. <laughs> Those are mighty fine wolves you have there, you say tentatively, hoping the goblins take some pride in their animals. If you're the fighter, turn to 100A. If you're the bard, turn to 30B. 100A. This is definitely going to work out for me. <laughs> there is no way. 100A. Yeah, so? Replies the goblin with the gem in its forehead. You sense that the wolves have something to convey to you. If you can just get a chance to commune with them, I am able to talk to. <laughs> I am able to talk to animals. You press on. Perhaps you'd like to know what they have to say. Nah. Why should we? They're just guard wolves. <laughs> They're just guard wolves. They're not even ours, says the second goblin, rising from the floor. Well, I'd like to talk to them. Oh wait, sir. Well, I'd like to talk to them. Scurred, says the first. Go ahead, fella. Talk. You stand quietly a moment, waiting for your emotions to calm down. Then you begin to croon in almost a tonal, soft melody until you feel the minds of the two wolves reach out to yours. Wait, what is going on? You can talk to animals? <laughs> when did this come Yeah, happen? what the hell? <laughs> Wait a second. Inside this room, there are two wolves. You can uh, talk to them. Uh, One always tells the truth. <laughs> Ooh. Both of them always tell the truth because wolves are cool. Ah, oh, damn! I can't even threaten them with like the horn. I'm like, yeah, they reach for the whip. Uh, you stand quiet a moment, and the wolves reach out yours. Why are you here in this chamber with these dumb thugs? Asks one wolf, disdain in its mental in his mental voice. Briefly, you explain your quest. The second wolf raises its head in interest. Perhaps we'll join you. It sounds like a worthy quest. I'd be happy to have you, you reply, but how do I get past these goblins? Offer them a magical weapon. Thank you. Now, do you have anything you'd like the goblins to know? No, we're just staying here a while to amuse ourselves. These creatures are so gross. <laughs> Tell them anything you want, but in case it means something to you later, remember, a bell should only ring, should ring only once. <laughs> There's a bell in this room. You don't have any idea what that means. But you shrug and turn to face the goblins. If you have a magical weapon that you're willing to give up, turn to 20D. If you don't, turn to 14D. I don't want to give them anything. Great. I think you could give them your weapon point first. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we fight them, <laughs> they're just going to disappear, right? Yeah. All right. Which is a shame because you this guy with the jewel in the forehead. Yeah. You look at the two ugly goblins who seem to be waiting eagerly and suspiciously to hear what you have to say. Finally, you say... The wolves told me that you are good masters. The goblin with the jewel in his forehead looks surprised, then angry. And the second one says, aw, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder which one's in charge. Hey, hold up. 
that's really nice. Thanks. Wow, we were just here the whole time. We're just sitting here being miserable goblins. And we don't really have a lot of people coming in here and saying nice things about us ever. So I'm just going to say thanks. You know, yeah. just thank you. Finally, man. Goblins, yeah, they just, they just, you know, if you just are nice to the goblins, maybe they're not such buttholes. Yeah. The wolves Come would like on. you to stop treating them like shit. Yeah. <laughs> Come off it, Skurd, says the first one. He's lying. We treat those wolves like crud and you know it. With incredible speed, the goblin bends down for a weapon, and suddenly you are in battle for your life. Turn to 152. Not for long. <laughs> no, I am not in a battle. The other one's going to kill the other one. 152C. Come on, other goblin. 152. Wait, what? C. 152C? Yep. That's not... Cool. Wait, what? what? You pull out... Wait, why? I think they I think they effed up the... Uh, they, they think the numbers got switched for the fighter and the bard. Oh, So right. I think we have to roll this back to with yeah. you being the fighter instead. I think we have to roll it back. Okay, does anyone remember where they were? So if we go back to 52, we can start yeah. this whole thing again. Okay, that's weird that... Yeah, 52. Okay. So, so we're going to talk to them. Yeah. 11G. Yep. And then... In 100A was what we took beforehand because we were the fighter. Yeah. So maybe they're switched? Yeah. So it's 30... Okay, if you're the 30B. 30B? Let's try 30B. Because I don't... Yeah. I thought it was weird we could sing songs. Yeah, this is for the fighter. Okay. Okay. What's it to you? Demands the goblin with the gem in its forehead. The other one. Ah, oh, man, we can't talk to animals anymore. No. no. <laughs> Apparently the that bard can cool. talk to animals. Man. Uh, the gem, the other one, which hasn't been, which had been lying on the floor, rises to its feet, and you suddenly feel yourself surrounded. Nothing, you reply, fingering your sword hilt. Well, we don't like intruders asking questions, especially intruders with swords, exclaims the first goblin, and it takes a step towards you. You step back. You want to continue talking? Turn to 32B. If you're ready to fight the creatures, turn to 22D. Uh, sure, I'm ready to fight, but they're just going to disappear, I guess. 22D. Deciding to attack the goblins, you're ready to... Uh, but if you're the... Oh, wait, sorry. Deciding to attack the goblins, you ready your weapon. If you're the fighter, turn to 46K. If you're the bard, 46K. Yes. Choose the weapon you want to use and conduct combat. If you win, turn to 24C. Well, they disappear, so I win. Right? Yep. So you go to 24C immediately? Yeah. Because of my healthy glow. Yeah. Relieved at having <laughs> ooh, relieved at having bested the two goblins, you stand and stare down at the huge gem mounted on the forehead of one of the ugly creatures. Suddenly, you hear a low growl from off to your left. You forgot about the wolves. You pull out your sword, prepared to fight again, but the two animals merely stay where they are, as if waiting. You think you might want to go through the broken door? You'll have to fight the wolves, turn to 8F. If you just want to let the wolves be and go about your business, turn to 18D. If you want to try and talk to the wolves, turn to 26C. I feel like uh, we could, we can say that the, like, disappeared and, like, he left the gem, because the body is supposed to be there. I presume you're supposed able to like interact with the gem that the goblin had in its head yeah well i'm gonna argue that the gem's not there because they disappeared right so anything that would we would get from the goblins we don't get because okay they just like they got thanos snap basically all right, right. okay yeah yeah it's fair um so you can still try to talk to the wolves even though you're a fighter sure 26 c uh, bark, bark. You bend, you bend one knee and carefully reach out your hand towards the wolves, showing them that you are a friend. If you're the fighter, turn to twenty-eight B. Okay, I'm the fighter. Good boys, you say to the two wolves, but in response, they bare their teeth, <laughs> growl softly, and then lay their heads down on their outstretched paws again. They're not about to move. You aren't going to fight these things. They look like they could tear you apart. If you want to leave? We'll have to go through the hole in the floor. If not, turn to 52. Well, I want to leave, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, 52 if, is like other stuff to do in the room. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's do 52 then. Oh, yeah, there's just a hole in the wall or the ground. Oh, the bell only rings once. There's a bell. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. we don't know that, though. Let's, is that cheating? Well, no, we, uh, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, we only, I mean, you can inspect the bell. 
Yeah. Or you can take the weapons on the floor because goblins aren't here now. That's true. Having a bunch of weapons um, to burn situations might not be a bad idea. Seems like a lot of people just want to be given weapons. Yeah. Once for curiosity, yeah, I'll go to the bell. 90. Well, I mean, technically it's kind of spoilers, but whatever. This game has screwed me over enough, right? I'm mm-hmm. deser- I, yeah, I deserve that's a, that's a That's a game. game I mean, they screwed up by putting the wrong thing in, right? Yep, that's true. The, the beautiful crystal bell hanging from the ceiling sparkles even in the limited light of the room. You feel it pulling at you, almost begging to be rung, to let its, slow, or its sound flow out over its sordid scene, perhaps cleansing as it does. If you want to ring the bell once, turn to 34B. Twice, 47B. Thrice, 48A. Uh, well, the me, dog, the, just the, to, the just wolves to guess. Are like... yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to guess and ring it once. Okay? This is just merely a guess. Mm-hmm. 34B. That'd be so good if they screwed me. They're like, yeah, you explode and die. <laughs> Slowly. Yeah. You yeah. explode in slow motion. 34B. A beautiful crystalline sound tinkles throughout the chamber. Turn to the beneficent uh, be- beneficent random tables uh, under 159. Okay, so yeah, this is just the... Oh. Number one, a gentle mist falls from above and heals one life point. Sick. That'll do. That'll do. And what number was this? 52. Number? Real 52. bad stuff will happen if you try to go there again, I think. If yeah. you try to ring it again. You think so? Yeah. Because it says the bell must only ring once, is what they had said. So yeah. who knows? Yeah, I mean, I you know, fairies and goblins and and talking skulls and bags, okay. But wolves aren't going to lie to you. That's true, actually. Um, well, the goblin's not there because it disappeared. So there's just I can't go through the doorway because the wolves are there. There's just weapons so, on the floor. Yeah, 36B. I should stop. Leaning over like that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 36B. You look among the pile of weapons littering the floor and the goblins fil- of the goblins' filthy chamber. They are battered and unspeakably dirty, just like the goblins. You wipe away the dirt on a large shield and discover a roughly sketched map. A label reading, You are here, is written on a chamber that is clearly this very room. An arrow points down through the hole in the floor. Excitedly, you realize that the map is giving you directions to get through two more rooms in this benighted fairy mound. If you want to follow the map, turn to 50E. If you'd rather not, replace the shield and decide what you want to do next. Well, gentlemen, mm-hmm. we'd be an idiot not to use the map, right? Right. Can't we be would, like we would collectively be an idiot. How does a map? How do you even draw a map of this thing? It's like go here, talk to this person, <laughs> get teleported over here, then go to the. <laughs> The Google, like the Google map directions for how to get to anywhere in this place. Yeah, there's no way. But before we find out, break time. Ah, All yes. Right. We have to run some ads for chat. We'll be right back. Hello, welcome back. I hope everybody got up and stretched and got some water because we have a map to follow. <laughs> This is not going to end well. So this is a Would map you ever works. follow a map you just found? Well, I mean, it knew where you were, so I have to assume that it knows where you're going. Well, it's just you're like right? it's just like scratched on a shield. It's not a magical yeah. map, right? It's just yeah. like a thing. But but if you like, if you walk into like the the mall and you're like, I'm trying to find my way somewhere, and it's like you are here. I'm like, oh, how did the <laughs> map know I was here? I'm right. going to look at it a little bit more, and like I feel this if strange compulsion to go where. You, if you carry the map with you, does the you are here change? That's the trick. Well, no, because no matter where you go, you are in the same place you're supposed to be. So the the shield is always going to be right. Or a real home is where the heart is kind of situation. Yeah. You're not yeah. lost, you're found. Yeah. How do we even know that the map, like there's a map, right? But how do we even know the map is leading us where we want to go? Where do we right? want to go? I don't know, but exactly. I, maybe we don't want to go where the map is leading us. You know? Like it sounded like the map is basically you are here. Yeah, go down. Like it yeah. didn't seem like that complicated. Yeah, it's like map. down the hole. It's like there's a hole in the there's, there's a there's hole, an arrow pointing, which is yeah. also literally the only way out of this room. It's not yeah. like that tough a map. Wherever you go, there you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, uh, let's follow the map. Sure, there's nothing that bad that'll happen, right? Fifty E. Come on, baby. 
At least we're seeing new stuff this time. Other than... Having decided to follow the shield's instructions or directions, you feel a strange compulsion take hold of you. You drop down to the hole and find yourself in 64, where you must immediately fight whatever creature you discover. Oh, no. Mm. It's going to be like, you see an adorable puppy. Please no dragon, 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 please no dragon. Please no dragon. <laughs> <sighs> what was it? The room where you find yourself has all the makings of a cozy cottage, except for the eight-foot-tall witch-like figure confronting you. Oh, shit. It's the lady from Resident Evil Village. Yeah. It's Lady like, Dimitrescu. <laughs> Step on me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> if you wish to be it's, stepped on, turn to page. Uh, it's an evil Annis, and she's ready to take you apart with her spiked mace and dagger-like claws. You wonder... If you can just pretend she isn't there. If you have a skull falling around, turn to 74M. Otherwise, turn to 126E. Well, Look at the picture. I mean... Oh, yeah, we've been here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is the Peter Pan room. I just... 126E. There's, there's something about, like, oh, no, it's a witch. She hits you with a giant mace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is not how I expected the witch to attack. Oh, that was witchy as hell. Oh, my God. While you're standing there thinking, the Annis makes it perfectly clear that she's not going to wait. She, immediately, she attacks with her mace. Turn to 83H. Why did you make me go to two different different entries just to make just to find out she's attacking me? 83H. You quickly realize that your opponent is one powerful lady, uh, and her mace proves to be a magical mace of defending. Uh, but you're committed now. If you're the fighter, <laughs> turn to 86J. If you're the bard, turn to 92J. Well, 86J. It's not going to be easy to defeat this witch with her magical mace. Conduct combat. If you win, turn to 86J. If you lose, turn to 88F. Um, so I'm just going to shoot her with my fucking bow. So, yes, yeah, like oh, you've got yeah. your bow. You do yeah. also have just like straight up five damage from your firebolt before you like start fighting her. Yeah, you get one for free, right? Oh yeah, I do. So the moment we start fighting, you'd be like Zot. How, how yeah. so this is the witch? Yeah. I'm just gonna shoot her with the bow. Uh let me just it's like uh, that scene in it's like that scene in Indiana Jones when the dudes Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoo, 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 and I'm just like <laughs> it's like ah fuck. Ah my face. Where's, you shot me right in the eye. Where's, 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 um where's, 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 Tell me about the anise. Okay, what, so what, uh, I have to oh, one sixteen. I use the bow. No, yeah. no, no, I use the bow. Right, so I gotta go to one sixteen D. Holy shit! She's All right, this might backfire. This might the the bow might just fucking explode and I die. Yeah. One sixteen D. This yep. seems to be a good time to use the horn. Oh no, that's the horn. Shoot, twenty six G. Sorry. Okay. Twenty six G. I'm sorry. Please. Please be good, please be good, please be good. I've been a good little adventurer. You grab the bow and the magical arrow from the quiver and prepare to shoot at the creature. Aiming carefully, you let fly. The arrow hurtles towards your target, but it never reaches it. Instead, it turns around in midair, returns towards you, and thuds into your back. Wow. So you are the monster. Subtract four life points. The oh. arrows you picked up were arrows of backstabbing. Why do we even have these arrows? <laughs> I hate right. this game. I okay. Hate... I'm so tired of this game and their problems. I just want to be on the moon. Uh... You must quickly grab another weapon and fight the creature you're facing in a more conventional manner. <sighs> okay, so, so the, just the Anis. Yeah. She's pretty scary. Yeah. Uh, she's got ten life points, so she okay. doesn't have much health. So you basically, if you, if you hit her once, she's dead. Well, no, I can shoot her and then hit her, right? Yeah, yeah. shoot then hit. Yeah. Um, yeah. but. Her to hit is she hits on eleven, mm -hmm. and she does eight damage. So she's pretty scary. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you've got your you can do five damage just straight up. Do you remember what page the witch was on? Sixty-five is 65. where. No, sixty-five is the room she's in. Yeah. So you're looking for eighty-six J is where we were sitting J. before. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the absolute last place. I we can't were. believe the fucking bow shot me in the back. <laughs> <laughs> At 
this point, I don't know why I'm surprised. No, know? me neither. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, oh, uh, I can't act all hurt. I should just be like, it, all right. It could have, the boat could have, you, you could have kept, like, it, uh, you were so close to keeping the horn and the bow disintegrating too, which would yeah, been, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't have had to You've gotten so it. sad when you blew that horn, and it'd be like, oh, it's a horn of deafening, deafening yourself. <sighs> okay, so I have to fight the thing. Uh, I shoot her with the mass with my missiles. Yup. Yeah. So you get that for thing. free, I think. Yeah. So, so you get five, yeah, it so just she, happens. She takes five damage, and then I we go to combat. I go first because I'm the hero. Yeah. So if I hit, I hit it on ten or lower, right? Yeah. Uh, I saw. Wait, why is it? I thought earlier in the book it said when you were setting up that it was eight or lower. It, no, but I have a magic plus two sword. Ah, yeah, okay. that's good. But he's got the magic sword. Right. So it's ten or lower. Okay. I saw and, the eleven for a second. I was like, and you do six <laughs> points of damage, and she's dead. She dies. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh you don't even hard. have to roll for damage. Okay. Nope. Damage just happens, Beach. This is the way RPGs are meant to be played. Okay. That's fair. Yep. Yeah. So if you win, you turn to 87J. Okay. 87J. As the anise falls dead, her body begins to shrivel up into a small ball. Gross. Oh, it's like that scene in Willow when the thing falls into the water. It's like the troll falls in. And it's like rips itself apart. And her feet slip out of her from her or slip out of her tattered black boots, revealing yellow and black striped socks on the creature's feet. It's like the wicked the witch. Mage. Yeah, but the mace remains unchanged. Or yeah, if you choose to take it, you have a plus three mace of defending. Holy what the fuck doodle. does that even mean? Okay, sure. I mean, is that just like it's plus three, in, like in the same way your web, your sword is plus two? Yeah, but I mean, like, sure. But yeah, what is take the, it. Yeah, absolutely. Which means it's which means you hit on an eleven and. Yep. Oh yeah, you hit on eleven and do eight points of damage. That's what she was doing to you. So that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> If there was a skull following you, now is the time to pay some attention to what it is trying to say. Turn to 105. <laughs> nope. This is almost random shit. Uh, however, if you have arrived here because of a map on a shield, you must go right on to 136P without stopping. After oh, you've dealt with the creature, you find... Okay, so yeah. So, 136P. So that room, Paul, last time we were in, there's a door that says Wendy's room. And you open it up, and you literally are fucking... There's Peter Pan and Hook... And they're fighting each other. You're just like, yeah, because that was probably closed. public domain. You're, yeah. you're just like close door and leave. Like you just no, of... you're there. You get sucked through. Yeah, you get sucked through and transported somewhere else. I can't remember where. What, what did I say? One thirty six P. One three six Papa. Yeah. One three six Papa. You step through the door into the daylight beyond, but as your foot leaves the threshold, the daylight suddenly turns to darkness, and you find yourself blinded. <laughs> Generate a number from 1 to 12 on even perfect. Excellent. Love getting blinded. That's cocked. <laughs> You're just mildly dizzy. It not perfect system. Yeah. Even? Yeah. Uh, 118 J. Okay. We are going to 118 J. God, I feel like we're not even like like we've gotten a lot done, but it's like we haven't done anything. Do you, you have a key I mean? at least? Blinded by the sudden darkness, you stumble before you begin to perceive a shaft of light in the distance. As you walk closer, you realize that the light is moonlight. Turn to forty. Sorry, turn to forty-eight. Hell yeah! Trip. Traveling by moonlight. <laughs> Uh, the woodland darkness is lit by a shaft of moonlight shining on a strange being sitting on a low tree branch. Looking ready to spring at any moment is a creature that appears to be half human and half grasshopper, but it's only a couple feet high. Oh, it's Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> it's literally Jiminy Cricket. He's wearing he, a top hat. He's going nah, to tell you yeah. about, yeah, make you choose moral, the, the right thing the, to do. The Grig notices you instantly and shifts into a po position poised for leaping. It could cover the distance to you in an instant, but it doesn't need to. It's armed with a quiver of very lethal-looking darts. Do you want to mm. fight the Grig? Talk to it? Or just ignore it? Well, talking to things hasn't got me in any trouble so far, so 52A. Absolutely. Good evening, you say. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> Good evening, you say to the Grig. You appear to be knowledgeable about this place. I am, I am, replies in the Grig in replies in the Grig in tones that sound rather like a cricket's. You explain your quest to him and ask if he has anything that might be helpful to you. He replies that he does, but you're going to have to trade for it. The Grig, <laughs> point, the Grig points towards the gnarled tree. The darkness and the misshapen bark of the tree almost prevent you from seeing it. But finally, you make out a beautiful sword stuck in the bark. Turn to 35H. Well, you just happen to have a bow and arrow set that sucks. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. 35H. The wondrous sword is available, says the Grig. It's magical and has only been used for 17 fights. Hardly been used at all, it has. It especially it's likes singers. The little singers lady fought at, down at the grocery store on weekends. Yeah. <laughs> it's barely been driven. Yeah, it's only got like 100 miles on it. It's brand new. Uh, it especially likes singers because it, too, can create, carry a tune. How much would you want for it, you ask? Why, I need you to have some more magical weapons to replace that fine sword. How many would you be willing to give in exchange? You have to give me something. Choose the number of magical weapons you're willing to offer as shown below. You need to generate the number next to it more or next to it or more for that number to be acceptable. If your offer is not accepted, you do not offer the number again. Uh, so you can offer one to begin with, then two, then three. So you could start with a roll. So, yeah, so it's yeah, like ten so so when with one item it's ten, eleven, twelve. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. So offer that bow up and, and mace. Well, you could offer the bow first, then you could offer the bow and the mace if you wanted to, and keep your sword because you know at least it's your sword. And then if you had to offer all three, then uh, you could try for that afterwards. But you can try with one, then two, then three, and see how you do. But hold up, do I have to roll the exact number? No, no ten or higher, five. seven or higher, four or higher. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it gets higher. easier the more you offer. But what if I offer all three and then I roll like a three? Then I'm just done. Then you can try to offer two. Then you can try to offer one. Oh. Which is weird. But right. I guess you might you as well. You cannot, yeah. You might as well try to offer one, I guess. Yeah, so you do not offer that number again. So you oh, have Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, well, offer one. Which is the yeah. bow. <laughs> yeah, I take the bow, Real I guess. Real good monster thing. <gasps> Damn. Uh. That's oh, sucks. for a second. Okay, what about the bow and the mace? Technically, the sword is better than the mace, but oh, sick! That worked. Or the that mace worked. is better than the sword. But... Oh, Do you whatever. want to keep the mace, or no? Because my my sword is my character. It's heart seeker, right? True. Can't, yeah. Can't just fair, give it fair. up, right? Uh, Got to role right. play well, at least a little bit. It I is mean, dice now friends. You, now you're getting a better sword anyway, or a fancy well, sword. No, I guarantee you, it's not a better it's a sword. sword. This, can... <laughs> this is going to end badly, Paul. I know you're you're, so you're, sword, you're trying to be optimistic. This is a sword that can, that can sing. That's true. And remember how good the singing swords are in in Looney Tunes. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah, yeah. it's a singing oh, he's sword. Not a good fellow. Oh, he's not a good fellow. Oh, he's not a good fellow. <laughs> All right. If your final offer is accepted, you must forget about the sword for now, unless you want to. Yeah. Okay. So, if your offer is accepted, turn to forty-six H. Uh, the the three amigos, the singing bush. Yeah. Right. Oh God. After you relinquish the weapons you have chosen to trade, the Grig hops down from his perch and leads you over to the tree with the beautiful sword stuck in its base. That's when you discover that the face on the tree is no mere coincidence. All right, Akasim, says the Grig to the tree. It's time to let go of the sword. I made a sound bargain. He turns to you and says, it's all yours. You grasp the hilt of the sword, and it slides out of the tree trunk as, it, as if through oil. As it is released, it begins to sing of adventure and conquest. If you're the bard, turn to 40 AG. If you're the fighter, turn to 50 AD. Well, I'm the fighter, so we got to go to 50 AD. The sword slides easily out of the tree as though as through butter. You like the heft of the sword and you discover in listening to its strange singing that it is a plus two magical sword in the hands of a fighter. I'm a plus Although two magical sword. I'm a plus two. <laughs> 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 Although the weapon is nothing to sniff at, you may as well have given up too much in exchange for it. However, you thank the Grig and ask if you can have a look around now. He says yes, then adds, please note that where the sword was, there is now another route out of the here, or another route out of here. 
If you later decide to take that route, turn to 60 AD, make a note of this number. The last route will always be open to you no matter how many times you come back here. Okay. So you can, we can always leave through 60 AD if we want to. I'm just going to leave right now. Okay. 60 AD. You want to see what else is around here? No. All right. I'm tired of getting fucked over. <laughs> Tired of their bullshit. Remembering what the Grig said about an exit in the tree, you go to where the sword had been. When you poke your finger in the hole left by the blade, the hole suddenly expands into a shaft that pulls you down. With no way to prevent it, you find yourself plummeting into darkness. You seem to fall forever, but suddenly you realize that you're falling toward light. In a moment, you're in a room that looks like a sculpture museum. All you get is one quick glimpse of a pedestal you're about to land on. To see if you can avoid landing on the stone pedestal, generate a number from 1 to 12. Get 9 or more, turn to 70 deep. If you get 9 or less, 64. Mm, that's a 1. 64 D. Are we dead? I hope we're not dead. A massive effort on your part swerves your body so that you avoid landing on the pedestal. Instead, you hit the floor hard, losing one life point. Oh, that's not even that bad. Well, yeah. that's like actually not that punishing. We're at 41 health, by the way. I think we'll be okay. Then. None of that Sounds is from like... fighting. That's just from like various yeah. things that have fallen yep. on you. And... The time that dog threw dirt on me and shit. Mm -hmm. Sucks. Um, turn to 76. I don't think we've got here. We've much. never been here before. Yeah, this is new. Your first... Okay, so there's a picture, right? Oh my god, look at that. That's so good. Nice. I, I, your first reaction to the chamber you find yourself in is a feeling of shock at seeing all the other adventurers, warriors, magic users, soldiers of fortune, thieves, here too. That was a weird way to Okay. Then you let out you let your bri or then you let your breath go as relief floods over you. They aren't people, they're statues. Finally, you feel puzzled that such a gathering exists at all. Why are they here? Why do they all have outstretched arms? In the center of the room is a magnificent gem resting on an elaborately carved floating pedestal. Suddenly, a little dark gnome in full armor steps out from behind one of the statues. A bunch of suspiciously lifelike statues. I wonder why yeah. they got here. Yeah. He thrusts his spear towards you and says in menacing tones, What in the name of the abyss are you doing here? If you want to answer the Spriggan and maybe learn more about this incredible collection of statues, turn to 15A. If you interpret his outthrust spear as a threat, you better fight him. You may, however, just pretend you don't hear the Grey Gnome and go about your business. Why is that always an option? Why is our character always just like... Uh, just like, eh. Yeah. You bore me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to talk to him. 15A. Don't kill me. 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 Don't teleport me. I should just say, don't teleport me. That should be my new thing. Don't yeah. teleport me. Don't teleport me. Don't teleport me. <laughs> Spear or no, spear or not, the little figure before you is barely half your size. Leaving your weapon untouched, you reply to the Spriggan. Frankly, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. I've been traveling through the Fairy Mound in ways that I've never traveled before, and I seem to have very little control over where I go. Hmm. Bunch of nonsense, if you ask me. The Spriggan Getting sorts. real. Yeah. <laughs> Bet you're out to steal my gem, too. It certainly is a magnificent jewel, you say, as if you just noticed it. <laughs> oh, what, that? Oh, geez, wow, that is big. <laughs> Didn't even notice it. Magnificent is as magnificent does, the dark gnome grumbles. That as means... long as it does its job of keeping people away from it, I'll be content. Keeping people away? How does it do that? Even as you ask, you're beginning to get a glimmering of just how the gem keeps the sprigging content. If you want to inspect the gem up close, turn to 152K. If you want to keep talking to the Spriggan, turn to 8E. Well, gentlemen. I, mm -hmm. I like the I like the way you're with the Spriggan. You're like, ah, man, it's been a day. Uh, <laughs> man, I keep getting teleported. Like, let me just tell you, like, it's this whole place is topsy turvy. I, I can't deal with this. <sighs> I mean. If we die, we're dead. Yeah. That's because we're getting to the point, true. we're getting close to the end of the show, right? It's true. So it's like if we die, that's it. We're stopping. Yes. We all need to realize this. Mm-hmm. So do you play more foolhardy? Yeah. And take larger risks. 
Are you <laughs> taking for granted? Uh, All right, you're banned forever. The gem, not only does the gem, you know, look like a trap, but the spring and the say time it, thing. It keeps, it keeps people away from it. Yeah. See, we we use the time thing to save our sword, remember? I'm yes. going to keep talking. I'm going to keep talking. 8E. All right. Remember, I want to find out what hat 152K. I actually am curious. 8E. When the spring... Excuse me. When the spring doesn't answer your question, immediately you add, Oh, well... I doubt if you really know how to know how it does it. I must be qu it must be quite arcane magic. Uh, pull a little Damn, bug just, bunny action on this guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just told him we didn't know how it works. You probably don't even know how it works. The Spriggan's little gnomish figure begins to swell with indignation. Arcane schmarcane! Of course it's magic. What else would turn whoever touched it to stone? <gasps> how about that? <laughs> Man, he got suckered. We just outsmarted somebody. So now you know. Hurriedly, you calm the Spriggan down and gradually wheedle permission from him to explore the chamber on your own. He retires to a little cushion in the corner and quickly begins to snooze. You begin looking around. 76. Nice. Which is, yeah, it's now we can just do whatever we want. For example, I touch like, the gem. Yes, go investigate the gem. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Is the gem one fifty two k? No, it's not. No, it's, it's a completely like, different. Yeah, the one last now. the last thought that goes to your brain is right. That <laughs> yeah. <gem. laughs> yeah, I was thinking uh, about a different jet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there's lots of cool stuff in here. There's a gem. There's a floating pedestal. There's a rolled carpet. There's a caped warrior. There's a female magic user with the staff. Uh, a door, mm. reptilian figures, and horse. Well, <laughs> I mean, horse. Horse. It's horse. horse right? Yep. 56J. That's like yep. our thing. Yeah. We can... like horses. It has to be horse. You can oh use God. your horse skills. <clears throat> you touch the horse and instantly feel the stone turn to quivering flesh and bone. <laughs> the rider dismounts, bows, and offers you the horse. <laughs> you know. Sweet. <laughs> just what you need to explore this entire place. Hey, He's just like, you, want a, you want a horse? Ha, 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 fuck. I'm alive. I'm alive. You can have the fucking horse. He just runs. He's like, I'm out of here. Yes. By the laws of <laughs> Fairy Kingdom, you now own my horse. Oh, God. The horse is yours. Uh, 132E. Yeah. All right. That definitely can't end well. No, this is not going to end. <laughs> hey a stranger offered us something you've been missing your own steed although you must admit that there hasn't been much need for it in this fairy mound quickly you throw your leg over the horse's back and mount instantly the horse disappears it was a teleporting horse <laughs> nice <sighs> instantly the horse disappears and you find yourself standing in 60 <laughs> Come on, man! Yeah! <laughs> Look at that art! Whoa! There's a chariot! <laughs> oh, the chariot? That's your other favorite thing! Yeah! You don't even have a second to gather your wits about you before a black, huge black horse with flaming hooves threatens to stamp you into the ground. The heat from the nightmare's hooves from two nearby fire pits stings your nose and eyes stifling your senses. The harsh screaming of the evil horse from another plane of existence pierces your ears and overwhelming you. If you have a magical item that will control the nightmare, turn to 38M. If you don't, turn to 48K. If you want to continue as if you're not having noticed the horse. Are you still on the yeah. horse? No, no, it disappeared. It disappeared. Yeah. So we don't have a way to, we don't have a way, right? I don't think so. No, I think I it would be very obvious if we had like some sort of wicked bridle. Yeah, if we had a wicked bridle. <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't think there's anything right no all right well 42k 
I can't believe they teleported us out, man. Are we just like, like, does everything teleport us out? Or do we just pick the wrong thing every time? You know I think what we're I mean? picking like, the wrong thing every time. Fuck, man. There's probably a couple things in each room that do just teleport you to random places. I just want to explore one room. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like we've never been able to look at all the stuff in a room. Yeah. Yeah. Makes the I'm game just, really I'm just long. imagining like the the fairy king and like all his advisors are just like looking at like a map of the castle and there's just like yeah. the little dot that's you is just like bloop, 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 bloop. Uh, like, he's moving real fast. I'm trying not to talk <laughs> directly to Twitch chatters, but Where's someone said time to arrow this horse. You uh weren't paying you, were, <laughs> you missed a gap. <laughs> yeah, you missed a bit. Yeah, now so, he's Brenny's two swords Johnson. Yeah. Now you, oh. If you could somehow convince the horse to use the bow, you might be in zip. Ah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. oh, please! Here, use this! Oh, wait, no. It's really gonna kill me. Kill anymore. me with these. Yeah. Uh... All right. So, uh, you have some weapons, but somehow they don't seem as if they'd be effective against the gigantic evil nightmare. Uh -huh. You want to try to escape from here? Turn to 70F. If you're willing to fight with the weapons you have, turn to 54G. I'm going to turn to 54G. I guarantee you they just kill me. But. No, I think the horse will respect strength. Oh, yeah. Wow, no one's ever stood up to me before. I have been quite the bully, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Damn. Conduct combat. Quickly, you grab what weapons you can, hoping that you've got something that will be useful against this strange creature. Conduct combat. If you win, turn a 102F. If you lose, turn a 56G. All right. It so. is Nightmare. Uh, is 54G. Yeah. Uh, all right, so it's got 13 hit points. Yeah. Well, uh, technically it's got 8 hit points because I shoot with my fucking laser beam. It Hell yeah. It's on a 9... And yep. it does five damage. All these creatures are awful. Yeah. All I right. mean, you're because you're going to have to see all of them, I think, is the issue. Like, yeah. you, it, it expects you're going to fight a lot. I attack the dumb horse. Hell I yeah. swing with my sword. I miss. <laughs> <laughs> Fiddlesticks. The horse goes, what does the horse hit on? Uh, Nightmare. Nine. nine? Or so nine yeah. and below. Yeah. So oh, he yeah. really hits. For how much? For five points. Five? Okay, I'm at 36. I attack the horse. That's a hit. That's a hit. Ten okay, the horse, dies. Yeah. okay. Uh, the horse dies. Okay. The horse dies? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Fuck. So 13. No, it was at 8. Oh, I only do 7. And you do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight? I only do 7 because of the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, so so the, the horse now. goes. Horse hits you. Horse hits. I'm at 31. Also, your ring of protection lets you avoid the first... Oh, hit. yeah, I'm at 32, yeah. technically. Yeah. yeah. He already used the his horse. bolt. I already used the bolt. And I kill the horse. You kill the horse. Hooray. All right. At least... You know what I like the most about this book? Is there's not a lot of combat. Because Fighting yeah. Fantasy, there's too much combat. And combat's very easy. Mm. Right? In Fighting yeah. Fantasy, it's like you can get stuck in a fight that you're just like, you can't win. Yeah, there's no way. Like with a door or something. Just stuck Shit. in a fight yeah. with a door. I, sorry, I, I like that there's... Ha, 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 ha. Very funny, Beach! <laughs> I like that there's an entry for Invisible Dragon and an entry, an entry for All Visible Dragon. Don't encourage him! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that entry for Invisible Dragon. How will you know if you've seen it? Yeah. I guess because he's going to kick your butt is why. Uh, all right. So what are we going to now? 102F. Uh, 102F. Yeah. 102F. The evil nightmare lies before you, dead. The flames on his hooves gradually dying away. The heat in this chamber stings your nose, and you realize that you will still need to deal with this place. Turn back to 60 and decide what to do next. Okay. Well, we killed the horse. Mm -hmm. wow. If you've slain the nightmare, you discover much to your horror that the creature is magically regenerated when you come back. Oof. If oh. you, yeah, if you end up coming back here, yeah, okay. Hmm. Um. Well, <laughs> I mean, we have to look at the chariot, right? Well, yeah, we do. <laughs> Nine M. <laughs> Too, too bad you don't actually have a horse to run it. You one horse teleported away, and the other one uh, you killed. 
sucks. The chariot is a magnificently constructed vehicle of fine, strong wood with hand-wrought decorations covering its surface. The shafts bear tooled leather traces, and mounted on the peak of the front is a huge gem that shimmers with magic as you reach out to touch it. If you decide to take the gem, turn to 134E. If you choose to try to hitch the chariot to the nightmare, turn to 124D. Even if the nightmare is dead, you have heard that sometimes the magic of special chariots can restore their assigned mounts back to life. Well, it might just be worth the try. Turn to <laughs> I knew what you were going to say before even... <laughs> it's the same... <laughs> hitching the chariot to the nightmare and hitching the nightmare yeah. chariot to the nightmare when it's dead is the same page. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> It's the same page. Like, you got to do it. You got to do it. I'm going to do it. 124D. We're doing it. There's no way this goes horrible for me. Somebody is, no. is somebody just like watching you is like, dude, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> First, I have to kill my horse and I have to put the you're chariot literally up to it. hitching a dead horse to your chariot. Yeah. You drag the chariot forward so that the shafts can be fastened to the harness on the nightmare sides. Cinching the leather straps tightly, you turn the nightmare and chariot it around so that you are facing the tunnel entrance. The horse is just dead. We're like, we're yeah. moving it. It's like, you know, hor giant eight foot horse probably weighs two and a half tons. Yeah. <laughs> if There's the like gem is still mounted, yeah. If the gem is still mounted in the chariot, turn to 152A. If you remove the gem earlier, turn to 15B. Uh oh. If the, if the One, horse controlled gem is still in the chariot, 152A. <laughs> oh, please tell me. Mounting the chariot, you brace your feet against the front and give the reins a sharp flick. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. All the while uttering a brief prayer to your gods. Instantly, the creature bursts into motion, starting the chariot with a sharp jerk. Before you can react, it is out in the open and the sun is pouring down on you. With flaming, thundering hooves, the nightmare pulls you at such speed that you can't tell where you're going or even where you've been. Then, suddenly, the creature slows down and you find yourself beside a narrow bridge over a yawning chasm. If this is the first time you've ridden the Nightmare Chariot, it turned to 60L. If it's the second turn to 116F, well, oh, yeah. on the bright side, this is probably not going to kill us, right? Because they gave us yeah. a second time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You Theoretically, you live to do it again. Yeah, 60 Now, oh. you don't know what happens after the second time. Though. No, I have no idea. 60L. As you step out of the Chariot, the Nightmare takes off at great speed, back the same way you came, you had no chance to take the gem. <laughs> so wait, the, the, it just dropped us off and we took a step off and the horse is like, fucking see you later, idiot. Yep, just pretty much. <laughs> you just Damn. like step off. You're like, hold up one sec. Let me just tie up my... Oh. Yeah. yeah. You're just like, <laughs> Hang on. I, let, 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 me, let, me, let me get my credit card out of my gigantic wallet. And it's like, <laughs> it's like wait. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got to pay the Uber, don't I? It's like, no, no, don't worry. No, you've already been charged. <laughs> I wonder what would happen. If you, is it, yeah, if you had not taken, I feel like if you had taken the gem, that could have gone very poorly. Yeah. <sighs> oh, this is the troll hole. Oh Damn. yeah. You find yourself in a huge underground cavern. Instantly, you see what see that if you want to get out of this cavern, there's nowhere to go but forward across the bridge that stands before you. But a mean-looking, huge, and altogether unpleasant troll stands on the other end of the bridge. And you have the distinct impression that it's not going to let you pass. What's the troll doing above the bridge, you wonder? <laughs> Are trolls supposed to be under bridges? That's what, what, that's, 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 that's hurt, very... Hurtful stereotype. That's, yeah, it's that hurtful is. stereotype, okay? Yeah. yeah, trolls are definitely allowed to be on top of bridges, okay? What's the deal with fairy dust? <laughs> yeah. At least the monster doesn't seem inclined to come across to get you, so you have time to ponder what you're going to do. All around you is bare rock with no crevices or tunnels. In front of you is a narrow, seemingly bottomless chasm. There's no way you could leap across it. So, hoping for some magical solution, you may investigate the bridge pillars, which seem to have some writing on them, or take the chance that the troll is too heavy for the bridge and go out uh, to look at the hoop lying in the middle of the structure. Or you can, of course, simply march across the bridge and attack the troll, that might just be the quickest solution. On the other hand, if you happen to have a magical carpet with you, turn to 132H. Well, I don't have a fucking magic carpet. They should give you that option all the time. Yeah. Even at the beginning of the game. Did you bring your magic carpet from home? <laughs> uh, shit. You have the magic carpet. Oh, fuck. Um, well, I don't really want to fight the troll. That's fair. So there's writing on the pillars, and there's like a hula hoop in the middle of the... Yeah. 
Um, I remember, if I remember correctly, we'll check out the writing on the pillars. One okay. Two, two, P. Another one with a P. Man, I feel like we didn't even come close to finishing this book again. No, we're not. The pillars or stanchions are decorated with magical writing. You stand by one and trace its patterns with your fingers. Roll, why would you do that? Yeah. For a sec there, I thought it was just like, <laughs> roll and die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Roll and die. Roll the die. If you get 7 to 12, all right, what do we get? 11. 75p. Higher is good, right? Yeah, always. 75. We're going to get teleported again. I know it. You feel nothing unusual about the pillars, not that you not or not can you read the writing on the sides. As the troll growls at your continuing presence, turn back to 130. Okay. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, I can't believe that horse statue teleported us. <laughs> I just saw the art for it and I got mad. I'm like, come <laughs> on, dude. Um, so you go check out the hoop in the middle of this thing. Yeah, I guess we got a. 67G. I guess we got to see 67G. If the troll is still waiting, uh, if the troll is still waiting to tear you apart, turn to 83A. If you've already disposed of it, turn to 79J. Well, uh, the troll is still waiting to tear me apart. I mean, apart. he's waiting. We don't know what for, but... Hoping the troll won't change in its mind and venture out on the bridge, you carefully move out towards the hoop. The troll just grumbles and grunts, rather like a rumbling volcano must sound. The hoop is just lying there on the bound pole surface of the bridge. It's gold and appears to be about eight inches in diameter. You're somewhat disappointed to discover that it's merely a plain gold hoop with no ornamentation whatsoever. Although at second look, you do see a small bangle hanging from one side. Maybe it's supposed to be a necklace. It looks like it will fit over your head. Mm, that's good. The distant rumble of the troll suddenly turns into growling words. Let me have the hoop, stranger, and I'll let you by. You can barely discern what the troll is saying. It's rather like hearing a rock talk. Well, at least you appear to have some choices now. You realize you can. Toss the hoop to the troll and hope it keeps its word. Throw the hoop at the troll and hope you hit it. Take one more. T take more time to ponder the matter, and incidentally, drive the troll crazy by playing ring toss with the hoop and trying to get it over a bridge pillar. Mm, yes, <laughs> I believe that would be considered trolling the troll. Yep. <laughs> Put the hoop over your head and wear it as a necklace. Throw the hoop into the chasm, or keep the hoop and maybe use it if you ring. Uh, if you ring, yep. ever need a ring. That is what that says. Yeah. Yep. In, in that case, turn to 130. Well, Put the hoop on I your mean, head and pretend it's a fancy hat. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to put it over my head because... Where is it? 124 F, yeah. 124 F. Well, it's a pretty thing, you think. I might as well wear it. You place the hoop over your head and you instantly find yourself transported to... Yes! Yes, <sighs> Adam, Yes! Instantly transported to 44, the hoop is gone from your neck. Uh, well, it's a good thing we didn't throw it at the pole because then it would have transported the bridge and we would have fucking died. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey. Oh, we're, this is, it's this place again. Hell yeah. 44? You're, you're back inside the tapestry. Uh, wait, 44? Yep. Yeah. It's the place. So this is what it said. Oh, I said four. Okay. Even with side of blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay, There's that yeah. bottle here. If you've been here before, you're pleased to discover that this entire area has magically restored itself to exactly the way you saw it first. You have exactly the same choices. Well, I mean, we might as well check out the bottle. Just keep stuffing fucking swords in that pouch until the yeah. guy dies. You look up in the sky where two fairies are flying around carrying a bottle between them. You chuckle as you try to imagine what they're doing with it. If you were sprinkled with fairy dust, turn to 76D. Let's go, baby. 76D. I've been sprinkled with fairy dust. This has got to be good. It's 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 got to be good. Suddenly, you notice that the bottle has a red glow to it. Oh, <laughs> fuck. The fairies get stern expressions on their faces and shake their heads at you as if you had asked them a question. Then they drop the bottle near your feet. If you want to pick up the bottle and examine it, turn to 74D. If you don't, ignore it. I got it. We're almost done. So 74D. Oh, nice. 
The bottle certainly looks ordinary enough. You turn around and sniff it. There's no hint of anything special. Finally, pull out the cork. Instantly, a great rushing shriek and a whooshing sound fill the air. The frightening noises aren't from the bottle, however. They're from a huge red dragon that's been called forth by the bottle of summoning you just opened. You have no alternative. You must fight the dragon. Nice. Conduct combat. The fairies are like, right. why did we even bother with the very yeah. best? I am magic missile, a dragon. Also, so, why were the fairies just carrying that around? Was this like a test? I like how... Okay, so there is a, uh, a a monster called Invisible Dragon. There is a monster called All Visible Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> is that like all of them in the entire world? Like they're all wow. there. Yeah, you gotta fight them there's, all. There's also a green dragon and a fairy dragon, and there's just a dragon. dragon. Yeah, I'm gonna fight normal dragon. Okay, it there's should not, be from there's, there's 44. An, there's an a red dragon. It'll be 45. Yeah, Is okay. It, I, I think that's right, yeah. I think there's a, there's a 45 that's a dragon, so I'm going to fight that one. Wow, this fight, this dragon might actually kill me. Never mind. Just the regular dragon, the 20 health? Yeah, this guy? Yeah, 20 health. Well, I shoot it for 5, so it's 15. Okay. Right? Yep. Yeah. And then it hits on 11 or lower for 6 points of damage. Oofa doofa. It's a damage. I have 32 hit points. All right. So I go. I miss. miss. That is absolutely unlucky. Okay. The dragon goes. It hits. Okay. Ah. So I take, I'm at 20, God, math is hard. 26? 26. Wait, how much does it hit for? 60. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I go. Uh, Try again. Yeah. I go. (laughs) <laughs> okay i hit the dragon so nice. the dragon is at uh i do six damage right yeah dragon so you started uh, you yeah, 15 you six yeah you do six damage yeah it's literally a damage raise dragon goes 12 11 okay i go to 20 i go okay yeah. i hit the dragon at three. Dragon goes. Twelve. Oh, that twelve. Oh, 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 oh. oh shit. I'm at fourteen. I think I got time, right? I go. Okay. Dragon Ooh. dies. Sick. You you what get to avoid one point of that damage also. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. technically at fifteen. Thank you very much. Yes. Um what page were we on? I don't even remember. Hang on. So it's that seventy four D. Yeah. If you win, turn to 34k. Okay. Oh, I hope they kill me, please. I don't know if you know this, Adam, but I have your entire uh, your entire adventure currently written in a pastebin file right now. Oh, what a gamer. Thanks. Yeah, yeah that's sick. So if we wanted to go back, we could always do that. Yeah. <clears throat> Exhausted, you stand there covered with dragon blood. You hear a faint flutter near your head and you see the fairies turning to the meadow. Couldn't you have warned me, you asked? I like you're just covered in blood. You're like, you couldn't have given brother a heads up. Like nobody wanted to help me out here. We did. They reply in our own way. That is. And they release a few grains of fairy dust into the breeze. Oh, is all you can say. <laughs> Turn to 44. All right. Well, so if you swing, you end up in the clouds. If you yeah. gate, you end up. I forget what the gate was for, but it was like uh, something about I going think to the gate. That was like solutions. The no, no, I right. think it goes to the wizard's place. A wizard lays past the gate, and the path takes you to your solution, which yeah, I believe is the fairy hole. We'll do that quick. If you you path two don't mind flowers. going over. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah path of 118A. I don't know how much farther it's going to go, but... This was the That's one, good, though. You get to run again. This that, that you, you were... Uh... We missed a fairy on the way by. So maybe yeah. if you oh, so we start number, running. Should we just say that we have an odd number here just to yes. see what the other thing is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we got it even for the first sure. time, I think. 102D. Even though you're running, you catch sight of a small fairy waiting alongside along the side of the path. When you see her hold out her hand to you, you stop and ask what she wants. She hands you a magical ring saying, here, you may need this. You, th- <laughs> you thank her and hurry along. Turn to 98. All right. Nice. Sick. 
How many Man. rings do you have? I don't fucking know. Just three, I think, right? Uh, I have two. I have the well, ring that was the key that turned into the ring. No, oh, three, I, have I guess, ring including your ring of protection. Yeah. Yeah. So they just hands me a ring, and they're like, yeah, good luck. Um, and then 90. Oh, shit. 98. 98. So now you're in the... Uh... Fairy pool. Yeah. But so if you we're going to stop here. Yeah. Like, oh. if you go to the pool, that's going into the... That's going into the fairy queen's realm, right? Yep. Yeah. And you, all you know about that right now is that you need some amount of magic items for it. Yeah. Which you have now, so... I mean, we could try it. Don't yeah. we just have to talk to her and just give her a bunch of stuff? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, but let's I'm, try it. All right. Let's just try it. We're all, we're so close, I think. 79 each. And then either they tell us it's not enough, and then we're like, okay, well, now we have to go back, right? Yep. So, or we have enough, and then, I don't know. And then something happens, yeah. Gathering your courage, you stand by the whirling... I went to 79 each yet. You gather, uh, stand by the whirling pool. You may say a little prayer to the gods and leap. If you have a magical ring, turn to 83F. If you have a magic potion, turn to 87H. If you have both, turn to 93J. If you have neither, okay, well, I have both. Yeah, you have a magic potion, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you haven't used it yet. Yeah. 93J. The swirling water catches you, sucking you downward. By some miracle that you don't understand, you're able to breathe as you go without sucking water into your lungs. Because of that, you find yourself able to relax and let yourself go. When the swirling stops, you find yourself completely dry, standing in a beautiful big chamber, rather like the Hall of the Fairy King. But here, the Fairy Queen awaits you. The ring and potion you held in your hands as you jumped in the pool have disappeared, turned to 82. That's bad. Okay. That is very bad. I needed those. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, 82. There are... There are... Um, that's a two-pager for art. Yeah. Yeah. Two pager for art. Colors, music, laughter, tempting aromas, life swirl about you. The fairies seem to have a lot more fun here in the hall of the fairy queen than they were with the fairy king. Tiny winged creatures fly through the air, chasing each other. Romance is being pursued, sumptuous foods eaten, bargains completed, and pipes played, all overseen by the fairy queen herself from her throne, which is strangely in the shape of a cat. The queen clearly knows everything and everyone in the chamber. She looks directly towards you, holds up a one hand, and instantly the great room grows silent. Then, in a soft but penetrating voice that sounds like a summer breeze, she says, There is a stranger among us. Come forward, stranger. You walk towards the huge cat-shaped throne, your thoughts flying. How does a fairy lean in? <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. To... How does a fairy lean back in a chair? Don't its wings get in the way? Most we the weirdest thing to think about. Like, wait a second, is it hard to sit down? <laughs> you walk <laughs> towards the huge cat. Uh, uh, well, where where are they? She asks, her voice taking on a biting tone. Uh, where or what, Your Majesty? You ask, wondering if you've come in on the second act of a play. Why, my gifts, of course. I did not know that I would be expected to give you gifts, Your Majesty. But of course, or. Uh, I did not know I was supposed to give you gifts, Your Majesty, but of course I'd be happy to do so. If you'll tell me what you'd like to have, I'll see if I can. I want my guest gifts, guest gifts, of course. I want a jam and a key. Wait a second. They're required of everyone who comes here. I have that. I have both those things. Don't I? Yeah, yeah we've got you the have a jam. jam and the mushroom key. Yep. Yeah! We did it! Turn to 109F. Yeah! We have a Gemini key! Oh, man! It's the first oh, time that's happened. That's the first time that's ever happened! So you, in order to get to this point, you needed basically one of everything, right? Yeah. Because you needed the two things to get to the water and then these two things. You quickly pull the gem and the key from your pouch and hold them out to the queen. Be sure to cross them off your list. The fairy queen examines the gem and the key then announces loudly, Look, everyone, this kind stranger has given me these wonderful guest gifts. There's a rippling of applause, but you notice that very few of the people in the hall actually stop what they are doing to look. Now, says the queen to you, as is our custom, I have some gifts for you. But first, tell me why you're here. And, above all, how that unpleasant husband of mine, mind, <laughs> the king, came to let you inside our mound in the first place. Oh, he said I was welcome if I would do him a favor. Just like that, just like the old coot. What favor did he want? 
He just wanted me to find him a lamp that he said was down. Lamp! Screeches the queen. I know just which lamp the old fool wants. I told him and told him and told him that it's mine. It's definitely the, look leg, of... the leg lamp from like Christmas no. Story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, fragile. It's supposed to be French. Uh, then a look of satisfaction crosses the queen's face, reminding you of the king when he asked you to find, oh my God, when he found the lamp. And she says more quietly, well, you've given me a guest gift, so I must give you the right to the freedom of my realm. So, if you find the lamp the king insists is his, you may take it to him. He will probably never let you out of the mound if you don't do as he asks, she adds thoughtfully. What about his gifts? Shouts someone from across the room. A look of anger crosses the queen's face. Yeah, then, that, that guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then she smiles with mock sweetness and says, It is the custom here that when a resident is given a guest gift, you must give a gift in return. How nice, you say, wondering what you might receive in this place. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. But first, she says, I'll do something for you that will help you in your quest. <laughs> if they teleport me or a dragon appears out of nowhere, <laughs> I'm going to fucking flip. I'm going to flip. If they teleport me, I'm going to I'm turning this off and it's never turning on again. Even a boat, chat says. <sighs> You're about to ask what it is when the queen makes a sudden gesture towards you. You feel a great rush followed by a momentary silence, and then you are back as you were. Almost. You are now wearing velvet robes embroidered with arcane magical symbols, and all your weapons and other things have been collected are gone! What? What has happened to me, your majesty? You ask, trying unsuccessfully to keep the panic out of your voice. You are now a wizard, she says simply. I thought it would help you complete your quest. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> Awesome. What the what? One one two H. H. Now we could leave it there if you wanted to. No, we have. We've already. We're too far deep. And okay. A, okay. The magic of the fairy mound has transformed you into a powerful magician for your sojourn in the realm of the fairy queen. You remember all the things you did and learned as a fighter or a bard in the fairy king's realm, but those abilities and powers Just have all been stripped class. away. Yep. Your powers are now those of a wizard. You were excited about your new role and can't help but wondering how you will do as a wizard. You take some time or you take some comfort in reasoning that when you finally leave the queen's realm, your previous identity will return. Otherwise, there would be no point in completing your original quest. But for now, there are no swords or panpipes. Those are not the tools of a wizard. The only regular weapon you retain is a small dagger for use in physical combat. Stupid. Using the dagger, you require a nine or more to hit your opponent. Uh, but this and the small weapon only does two life points of damage. This is clearly not the best way to fight, so you must rely on your magical skills. You find yourself holding a magical staff in your hand. Somehow, you know that the staff has ten charges. Each charge releases a magical bolt that always hits and does six life points of damage. No matter how many life points you add remaining, you now enter the Fairy Queen's realm. You now have thirty. As a powerful wizard. You have a variety of types and levels of spells available to, to you. You must select the spells that you think... Holy jeet, the whole game just restarts? Yep. Holy shit. Turn to, to 128 E. Holy crap. Oh my god. <laughs> this is like now on... You're like now on disc two. Yeah, yeah. This is literally disc two. Wow. You, we, this is like... You're only like no. half the way through the game. We're stopping. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If we ever come back to this book, we can skip right to 12080. Yeah, that's true. I can't believe there's a whole other section. Actually, you know what? I'm not surprised there's a whole other section. Like you, were, you, were, you were in the, the Fairy King's realm, and now you're in yeah. the. Now you're in the. You're fairy playing the Fairy Queen's, Queen's game at this point. Because I imagine once you. Once you pick oh your spells, God. you've got to then, the DLC section now. Yeah. Once you pick yeah. your spells and get that stuff ready, you're going to come back to the to the to her room and you have to then pick what you think is the lamp. Oh and if you get it right, God. then you have to be able to take, you have to find your way back to the fairy king and give him the lamp. And if you get it fucking wrong, he's going to make you go all the way through everything to get keys and gems and other shit so you can go back to her realm and pick out something else. I gotta see what where does ninety seven F take us? I have to know. What's ninety seven F? That's where we go after the oh. She gives us a bunch of stuff and then we have to look around the fairy chamber, basically. 
That's yeah. fucking wild. I thought we were almost at the end. We're mm-hmm. not. We're not even it's remotely the, close. We, or That's we the halfway point. The the uh, Symphony of the Night upside down castle. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love oh, people be like, oh, you you got ghouls and ghosted. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, it's a big book. We couldn't finish and, and it. I mean, it's a big book. Yeah. And as we've been going through this, like, there's a lot of places rooms. we haven't been there's yet. There's a lot of rooms yeah. that I do not recognize. Well, I think that we can just, yeah, we'll finish the, the next time we want to come back to this whenever in a year, I guess. It's probably a goodly. Oh, Paul, my favorite, my favorite is 89G. What's 89G? There's. A oh, lot, there's a lot of those. There's more than one. Yeah. yeah. What ha- What do you do? I don't know. You just yeah. run? I guess, because I'm like, I, it doesn't tell you to go anywhere. It just has a big word that says run. Yeah, there's a yeah. bunch of those in the book. Like, there's more than one. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, I thought for sure. I thought if we had the items, and the, she would just be like, oh, yeah, here's the lamp. I'm like, sick. I did it. <sighs> Alrighty, I really good thought game. we were close. That was good. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks Paul and V. Made some good for progress this time. We did make some good progress. Uh, Man, that was wild. Yeah, I don't know when we'll be doing another one of these again. Whenever, but that was fun. Twitch shot slash YouTube. Thanks for hanging out. Let's see. That's gonna be it for this episode of Dice Friends. Um, but before we go, just remember that uh, this stream and this video and everything else Loading Ready Run is do- brought to you by your support at patreon.com slash Loading Ready Run. Thanks a lot. It's very nice. It's neat that we get to do this. So, Yeah. yeah. That's it on us. Everybody have a good night. Bye.